Welcome to the Town of Scarborough Planning Board meeting for April 8th, 2019. You could all join me with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. And Doreen, could you do the roll call, please? Nicholas McGee. Here. Rachel Hendrickson. Here. Roger Beale. You will be back. Robin Saunders. Absent. Richard Duperry. Here. Rick Munkin. Here. Jennifer Ladd. Here. Okay. Uh, we do have uh, one absence tonight, so that means Rick Duperry, you will be a voting member this evening. Next, we have the approval of the March 18th, 2019 minutes. I'm going to motion to table these. They're not quite prepared yet. Do have a second on that? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? I'm sure that to be unanimous. Thank you. All right. First item up tonight. Uh, and actually, I'm just going to make a little public comment before we start into the full agenda. We have a lot of business here tonight, so if you can keep your presentations um, to kind of that quick overview, really hit on the high points, which are items that staff comments would have outlined and you would have had those as applicants. Uh, try to keep it to a minimum. And then, of course, when it comes to public comment, uh, if you have anything you'd like to say, you know, we ask that you just be direct, kind of get to the point, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. We'll see how it goes. All right. So first item is Crossroad Holdings, LLC, request a preliminary subdivision review as part of a planned development project for the Downs Innovation District, 90 Payne Road, Assessor's Map, RO52, Lot 4. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. As you guys know, this project's located in the Crossroads Plan Development District on the northerly portion of the Downs property with access off of Payne Road. Uh, the applicants in front of the board tonight with a preliminary subdivision plan for the entire phase two site that includes a 57 lot light industrial and commercial subdivision. So the applicant was in front of the board in March with a preliminary subdivision plan. Um, at this meeting, the board requested additional information about the proposed lots to access to lots 1A, 1B, and 1 in their relation to Payne Road. The applicant has provided some conceptual plans illustrating how this portion of the property could be developed. So the applicant should be sure to discuss these plans with the board tonight. Given the size and complexity of this project, there are some details that need to be worked out leading up to the final plan <laughs> submission, but staff is comfortable with the overall layout and approach to the project so far. So we've, staff has provided a host of review comments along with our peer reviewers, uh, but at this point, I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks. Dan, would you like to introduce the product, please? Sure. Uh, Dan Bacon with Goral Palmer here on behalf of Crossroads Holdings LLC. Um, I do have a couple slides that I wanted to, to provide that are not engaging with the system. So I didn't know if. Do you have to log off? Or? I don't really know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's always a different story. Um, well, I'll just roll with the Can boards. You plug in or? Yep. Um, as uh, Jamel introduced, we were before the board for uh, a fairly comprehensive presentation at your last meeting, and I know how long your agenda is, so we'll be brief and kind of focus on uh, the outstanding items from that last presentation. Um, and as was introduced, it sounded like the board was uh, fairly comfortable with our preliminary subdivision uh, layout and uh, approach to the project. Um, we do have a number of staff comments that are uh, technical in nature that we uh, plan to address with the, with the staff in advance of the board's uh, final subdivision review uh, in a few months after additional work is done uh, with our state agency reviews, which are pending right now, uh, main DOT, DEP, and Army Corps. Um, but the, the item the board wanted to discuss further really was uh, the the, the potential layout and the relationship of lot one, um, lot 1A and 1B to uh, the site, but most importantly to 
the Payne Road, Scarborough Downs Road, and Innovation Way, um, which are which are the roads that, that these lots would front. And uh, we realized that uh, in the submission previously, the board had those large lots, but really just kind of driveways shown to, to provide access to those lots. Um, and although this is not site plan review, when you typically look at the, the site layout and development and design, um, we did think it was appropriate to provide a concept plan as to the likely direction of development on, on these three lots and to show how there are three individual lots, but how they're going to be interconnected, um, how they're going to, the driveways will interconnect, and how the three access points would be shared and used um, by all three lots. And also to give a sense for um, the likely layout of the site, how buildings could front Payne Road, um, and how, how coming in the Scarborough Downs Road, uh, there's a great opportunity for kind of a green gateway into the project with the building set back um, from Scarborough Downs Road. So as Jamel added to uh, the overhead, and, and we have on the board here, um, again, this is simply a concept, um, but it's the, it illustrates the, the direction of uh, the potential development of these lots. So there's two lots proposed along Payne Road, uh, which we're proposing to have a right-in, right-out access point um, to Payne Road, but also have interconnections to um, an access off the Scarborough Downs Road, which would be full service, and an access off of Innovation Way. Um, and and the, we're envisioning those lots as being more of the kind of auto-oriented uses um, really on the Scarborough Downs site. So. Um, Scarborough Downs has frontage on Payne Road, also Haggis Parkway and Route 1, but this is really um, the only part of the site that we anticipate, say, a gas station or a convenience store or more of those kind of auto-oriented uses given the nature of Payne Road. And we've designed it intentionally to kind of focus those uses to the edge of the project um, and along Payne Road. So, and the zoning really dictates that where gas stations are allowed, but in a limited area uh, close to Payne Road. So the vision is for buildings to be along Payne Road, have a good relationship to the street, um, and then, but not be located right at the corner of Scarborough Downs Road and Payne Road. We want that to be a grand entrance to the project, that to be highlighted by signage, by landscaping. Um, you see on, on the plan here and, and on the screens, a, really a greenway along the Downs Road as you come into the site. Um, and that's in part, as a grand entrance to the project is also in part due to wetlands and, and wanting to not impact the natural resources along the Downs Road. Um, so that's the design intent there, is to have the buildings closer to Payne Road, that greenway along the Downs Road. Um, and the other primary use that we're anticipating on this site is the potential for a, a, a mid-size retailer. Um, it could be a grocery, something along those lines. This, this is illustrating how that could occur on the site um, and be designed in a way that's set back from uh, Payne Road, set back from the Downs Road, so that's back isn't to, to either of those streets, um, and, and also integrated with the uses along Payne Road. So again, all <coughs> three or four different land uses and activities will share access and distribute traffic um, evenly, so not one access point is overburdened by, um, by traffic impacts. Um, so, again, this probably isn't exactly what's going to happen. Um, we don't have end users that are kind of signed up for this site, um, but we wanted to provide a sense for the direction of the development of the site and what we thought about in terms of laying out the access points and what we think about in terms of how it can be interconnected. Another component that we talked a bit about that, that's shown on, on the plan here at the last meeting was walkways and pedestrian access. Um, and as presented at your last meeting, we have a robust pedestrian network in the Innovation District, uh, really kind of terminating at this, at this site um, and connecting into the Innovation District and ultimately connecting down to the center of the Downs, which is designed to be very walkable um, in, in a and really a human kind of uh, walkable space. I would say this is the edge of kind of walkability. Um, 
because Payne Road is, is really more the rural side of the project. Um, it's, a, it's a heavily traveled corridor, but there's no sidewalks along it today. There's also limited development potential around, um, around the downs in this location. So our intention with the plan is to provide sidewalks within the site plan, within the site, and connect to Innovation Way and to the uh, Innovation District that was presented a few weeks ago, and also connect down into the core, um, but not to build sidewalks along the Downs Road, um, because we really don't think pedestrians are going to be using that part of the site. They're going to they're going to end up. Um, frequenting the retail and et cetera that's on the site and then going back to the innovation district. Um, so we'd prefer to invest in sidewalks in places we think that are going to be used by pedestrians and, and really focus on those areas of the site. Um, so I think that really covers our intent for the presentation tonight, recognizing you have a lot on your agenda. Um, we recognize too that there's a lot of um, additional kind of cleanup items and technical things that we need to address before final and plan to work with staff on, on resolving um, all of those matters. Um, and we also have a, robo, a ro robust um, traffic movement permit process that we're in the midst of. There's a scoping meeting next week working with staff and DOT and the <coughs> town's peer reviewer. Um, so we've intentionally with these access points, we added a note on the preliminary subdivision plan that says, um, these access points require DOT review and also planning board final review through final subdivision. So um, the access points certainly could be modified or adjusted as part of the traffic movement permitting process and you aren't by approving preliminary subdivision tonight committing to those exact locations before you've gotten your traffic guidance um, both from the state and from your peer reviewer. So we wanted to be clear about that so that you don't feel like at preliminary you're approving curb cuts that may need to be changed at the court final. So with that presentation, I'll turn it back to the board. Thanks, Dan. Uh, so we do have opportunity for public comment this evening. Is there anyone here that wants to speak on the item? If so, you can approach the podium, state your name, speak clearly. All right, I'll close public comment. Roger. Your grand prize for missing a couple of board meetings to be in Florida is you get to lead this one off. I don't know anything about this. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think, I don't know what happened at the prior meeting, but what you proposed here, I don't have a problem with. I think it looks fine. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of comments regarding uh, staff's comments. Uh, and I won't take up a lot of time because of the agenda. But, Regarding the mass transit, um, it seems to me, I mean, we're, we're, we're sort of pushing you to come up with something, you know, a plan for that. But to me, that's a two-way street. Mass transit has to want to do it, too. They have to see a demand there as well. So I think we, it's important to keep that in mind. Um, and the other thing is... Um, I, I think I'll just leave it at that right now with my comments. Thanks, Roger. Rachel. Yeah. Um, I, I really appreciate the concept plan this, as you've laid it out. It really helps me visualize the possibilities of what's going on there. I need to just check a couple of things. Uh, I could not immediately find the acreage you were talking about in lots 1A and 1B. Do you recall what that was? I think combined, they're around 25 acres, um, plus or minus an acre. Um, so 12 and a half each, you know, kind of, maybe. No, lot, lot one is in the 20 to 23 acre range, and then 1BA and 1B are, I think they're an acre to acre and a half each. Um, I bet Drew will know the answer to that, if you want specific acreages. But. No, I just kind of needed a ballpark there. Yes, um, lot and one is a lot larger than the, the frontage lots. Correct, and uh, you have an area that you're calling the stormwater management feature uh, and on the concept, is there any thought that the rest of that lot is gonna be built or? 
the in, the intent is. Um, or is it too I mean, many? I was wondering if there's too much though, wetland there. Or, oh. The wetlands are sh um, the, the plan that Jamel has up, and I can go this way. The wetland areas are here. So they create a sort of a, a natural resource kind of gateway into the innovation district. So um, there is a wetland band, but there is upland between. Um, on the overhead there, there's upland between the back of the building and that stormwater feature. So development could happen back there. This concept you know, doesn't anticipate it, but it's, there is room for for some development um, if if warranted. Okay. Um, I noticed, I, I think you mentioned grocery store, and I will tell you my fondest hope is that a Wegmans ultimately comes uh, into Maine. Um, they, they're now in Massachusetts, and it's a great grocery chain. That's a gentle hint. The uh, uh, in terms of marketing, uh, but the um, I, I guess it's, you're into a chicken and the egg situation, and, and so is the planning board. Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of I, I would sense it would be better for you in terms of marketing if you knew you had the access to Payne Road. Um, we would need to know what the traffic study looks like before we can deal with really with the question of and access on Payne Road. So as I said, the, the chicken and the egg here, but let me just ask you a couple of questions. Uh, people heading south on Payne Road, in order to turn into that commercial district, they're gonna have to go onto Scarborough Downs Road and take a left into that area, correct? Correct, for any of the uses, yeah. Now, how once they take a left into there, is there going to be any thought of actually having streets in there, or is it going to be one large parking lot with signs? Um, we're anticipating if it if it's all if it's a privately developed site without without streets, it's probably driveways um, and drive aisles that you navigate through. Um, you see the the access coming off of the Downs Road, coming in and entering the parking lot, that's you know, potentially a drive aisle that doesn't have a lot of openings, so it doesn't feel like a parking lot, and then you get into the various parking lots. We're anticipating the, the drive that goes from Payne Road to Innovation Way to, to have limited access points to the parking lot, so it feels like more like a, a street, but they would be privately owned and maintained um, as driveways. Is that, I think that's what you're getting at. Yeah, I mean, and again, I'm trying to figure out how the, yeah. the traffic, how the traffic is going through here because this looks like a really large parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of transit, if this larger building that you're thinking <clears throat> about or, or you're conceptually, is there a place for a bus station for a, people to yeah. get on and off? That would be, I think, important for a commercial area. Yeah, um, and we've been planning on a, a bus stop, as you know, in the core of the Innovation District, which is on the screen right now. Um, we'd anticipate there's, I mean, there's an opportunity for a bus stop um, at the Innovation Way driveway um, for the site. So if you're looking at that, it would be to the right of the, the large retailer, um, which would then connect you to a sidewalk so you could get to the other um, establishments. If the corner is more of a convenience store gas station, then it's, you know, trans is probably more geared towards retail versus gas station. But mm -hmm. um, I think that's where we're thinking about a potential bus stop is since it would be going Innovation District to have it uh, a stop on both sides at that Innovation Way um, driveway location. Okay. I, I think let, let me just go, go back to saying I appreciate the, the work that you've done here, and it does help, but we still have some questions of the chicken and the egg uh, in terms of the development. Um, I would find it difficult to make a decision tonight based upon what's here because there's stuff missing. There's the, the traffic study is missing. Uh, I don't see, I, I'm still not clear how this is presented, a lot of trees certainly, but how it doesn't just become a giant parking lot with some buildings on it, and that, that concerns me. 
Now, I appreciate the work that you've done facing the buildings away from Payne Road. Uh, I appreciate the, the, the thought that went into creating um, kind of an esplanade through the Payne Road exit uh, and, and basically paying a lot of attention to a landscaping plan, which I will certainly be happy to take a look at at some point. Um, but I, I think there are still a lot of questions that I would have. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Jennifer. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to confirm, I think in here I read somewhere that you are in intending or suggesting that the right in, right out on Payne Road um, would help defer some of the right turning traffic from the Scarborough Downs intersection. Is that right? So um, I, uh, understanding that this is conceptual, I think I would just suggest that if that is an option for these lots, um, that thought be given not only to the limited access, um, it's kind of a careful balance, I understand, because it's like uh, you want to encourage people to um, to use that and use it safely, but not make it a straight shot out to, um, to Payne Road, but just to consider the balance between um, <clears throat> cars that may be moving from other parts of the downs through there to get onto Payne Road and any pedestrian access that might be going on um, between the retail uses there. Um, <clears throat> and then just a question, the, um, I know that these driveway locations are preliminary, but in the, um, the last submission that you made, there was, can you just set the context for this location, I guess, with um, some of the, pull, like the parking pullouts along Innovation Way and some of the trail access, does any of that fall within this view or is it not shown because it doesn't fall within this view? Sure. So, uh, in this view, Pull out about here for the directory sign and mailboxes, etc. for the innovation district. If you look at, at the last meeting, um, and then this location down here, just kind of just okay. leaving the plan, is where there's the crosswalk. We talked about the the parking right. um, and the trailhead, the trailhead, the trailhead area. So um, those are the. Those are the two reference points. Okay, thanks. I'm all set. I'll go ahead. Thank you. Do Perry. Um, I appreciate you doing the, the concept for us. It does help a lot. Um, I know we don't have a traffic study yet, and, and I'm not sure. <coughs> coming out of crop, coming out of um, Scarborough Downs now onto Payne Road, is there a left-hand turn signal for that? For that intersection now, I'm sure there probably will be right in the future. I'm looking at there will be. And do it the yes. <laughs> so when you're coming out of when you're coming out of the crossroads development, mm -hmm. you're going to make a left to go to Cabela's or whatever. There, there's going to be a left turn lane. There's going to be. Yeah. I know there's a left turn right. lane. I kind of like what you did with the road there, how it's two lanes out and then two lanes when you get to that second entrance. Mm -hmm. um, I I just couldn't remember if there was one there. Already. Yeah, I personally like the, the three entrances, so um, that's all I have. Thank you. Rick Mikey. Uh Yeah, I appreciate the, the, uh, the view with this concept here. Just one point on the entrance from Innovation Way. It seems like that building, and in the corner of that building is right up against where there's going to be in and out traffic, and I just wonder if Maybe the footprint of the building's too big, or is there a, another solution? It just seems so close to the building. Um, I think you're right. Um, and I think that during site plan, um, the board's going to have a lot of time to <laughs> make sure that that works. Um, we wanted to get you a concept that 
was illustrative and that kind of showed how those access points can be um, used and, and used appropriately. We probably erred in terms of how close that building is to that corner, so I, okay. I, I don't disagree. Um, and I think we need to look at that. Um, and the board's going to, you know, at site plan review, which it could be this year, it could be many years from now, depending on whether we can land Wegmans or not. But um, <laughs> I think we, we can certainly address that. I, I agree with you. Um, okay. And just finally, if you do land Wegmans, yeah. maybe we can get one or two uh, charging stations there because that's usually a good uh, business for a charging station to do some EVs. We're going to have charging stations in phase one. So um, they'll come before Wegmans, but maybe with Wegmans too. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's, they're moving forward this spring, a few charging stations. Excellent. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so <clears throat> I know you're asking for a preliminary subdivision approval this evening. Um, if it was delayed, let me, I'm just going to put in this question. If it was delayed, what other information you believe could, you could provide this board for clarity purposes? What would, we're, what would possibly we're change? We're months away from... Right. Our DOT permit. So I think that the whole chicken or the egg comment is um, is not a preliminary <coughs> subdivision issue um, because typically the board before final subdivision needs a DOT permit, not preliminary. Preliminary is not uh, typically required to um, needing an approved curb cut location or uh, final traffic resolutions. And so DOT has to issue, DOT has to agree to the, to the right in, right out, and the board has to agree to the right in, right out, and that location before final. Um, so I think it is a, a challenge for subdivision to continue to move forward without preliminary because um, a client's not able to address all the other staff comments because we need kind of clarity on the layout of the subdivision, the lot locations. Uh, the storm water locations, all those things that then inform addressing, I would say, 80% of staff's comments, you know, easements and association agreements and all those things that the board wants cleaned up before final. So um, we've tried to present this in a way that addresses the board's issues and gets a final approval. So recognizing the traffic and Randy's hard work um, that he's doing with staff already in DOT can continue to play out before final because it, it's going to need you know a few months for for the traffic to be resolved and for the board to feel comfortable about comfortable about traffic generation so we're not ignoring it it just isn't ripe yet um, it will be ripe right be before final approval so do you feel confident that um, between now and your next presentation of this <laughs> area you would have a lot of those details for the board to review we do yeah in fact we can have a meetings design, you know, focused on, on traffic and access points. I mean, that would be a, a, a very kind of reasonable next step for the board is after preliminary and all the work with DOT is we can have a, not to clog up the agenda, but we can have a meeting dedicated to kind of the access points and review and present all the traffic data and what DOT is saying about those access points and get the board's review so that it's, um, so you have time to deliberate about it before final. I mean, that mm -hmm. would be a, I would say that would be a good path to kind of resolve those things, uh, recognizing Randy has more work to do before he can, he can do that. And then uh, my final question for you is, do you have anything that you've seen through staff comments that really causes you concern, some sort of condition that maybe they've been asking for that you don't believe is reasonable or could be met? No, I think um, the comments at this point, other than resolving traffic, is we need to meet with staff and go over details, like what is the surface treatment for crosswalks and um, what does, what do the easements look like for, for the trails and the stormwater management? You know, a lot of those things that this guy isn't ready to <laughs> sign off on us moving forward until we know that the layout's set and we know what easements we're describing and what stormwater lines we're specking out, whether it's private or public. So. Um, we're prepared to address all those things in the next two months as traffic evolves further. Thank you. All right, with that said, um, you know, every, every board member here has uh, 
has reviewed this material and we've had a couple of shots at this. This is certainly not the last we're going to see of it. So, um, you know, ask all of you to, to really kind of feel feel it is where you, you think you are with this. I'll put forward the motion um, to approve a preliminary subdivision approval for this evening for this project. Second. And a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Show three. Opposed? Show two opposed. Okay. Carried. Thank you. Next item Pine Point Grill requests an advisory opinion for a miscellaneous appeal for an expansion of a legal non conforming use. 240 Pine Point Road, Assessor's Map U25, Lot 16. Jamal. Thank you. I'm just going to try and get this on the board. I'll give you a lot of time to pass that today. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this project is located in the R2 zoning district, uh, located at 240 Pine Point Road, as you said. So the applicant applied for a miscellaneous appeal to the Zoning Board of Appeals for an expansion of a legal non conforming use. In accordance with the zoning standards, before making any, a decision on any miscellaneous appeal, the Zoning Board shall refer the appeal to the Planning Board for an advisory opinion. The applicant's proposing to utilize the outdoor patio at the restaurant for outdoor sit-down table service. The applicant has also provided a parking summary demonstrating that they are required to have 26 parking spaces uh, for the restaurant use. So there's 16 parking spaces on site, as the applicant explained, and they're entering into a lease agreement with the church next door um, to provide the additional 12 parking spaces required by the zoning ordinance. Uh, so the applicant should be sure to discuss this process with the board. And that's what I have right now. Thanks, Jim. Mm -hmm. Take a moment and introduce yourself and the project, please. Hi, I'm Sheila Maselli, owner of Pine Point Grill. And um, as Jamel stated, I'm looking to expand from the waiting seat area to seating uh, dining area. It does have the patio area is already there. This was just an aerial view. It does have a garden, and um, Bradford Road is a private road that goes down that street. Um, there's a lot of parking in the back as well. Uh, but as Jamel mentioned, we, do, we did enter into a lease agreement with the church next door, which um, benefits them because their congregation is um, smaller, so um, it allows us to pay for parking and use their parking, and it's um, the sidewalk you can easily access Pine Point for Element. There's also a path that goes across Pine Point as well, and it would just be seasonal, so with five tables that are out on the patio. Thank you. Um, do you have an opportunity for public comment? Is anyone here willing to speak at the issue? Just approach the podium, state your name. No? Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Jen. Um, I noticed that you mentioned in here that this was um, at least prompted by the potential sale of this business. Correct. And so I was just curious if your plans um, for a lease agreement with the church, if you have plans to continue that moving forward, even if the sale of the business doesn't go forward. I would, I say, we've signed it for the, for next year to yearly lease, that would be reviewed yearly with the sure. church. But um, I think they want to make sure that everything is okay and um, we did contract for 12 spots, but I don't know if we'll use those 12 spots, but I, we did that for this, to meet the standards. Okay. That's all Rachel. Yeah, one of, the, uh, one of the standards is that we have to make sure that there's no unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions. And um, I, I would urge you to take a look at the crossing. Uh, Bradford Lane may indeed be, be a private road, and I noticed that there's a legend here marked path and sidewalk. I'm looking at this version. Um, people being people, they're going to cross wherever they feel like it, uh, whether there's a path or not. So I would encourage you, if this appeal goes through, that you really consider how you're going to direct people either to the sidewalk or to a marked path, prefer preferably with some sort of a, um, 
some sort of a fence that makes it clear so that people are only crossing at one point onto Bradford Lane rather than uh, wherever they happen to park their car and walking through this uh, the church area. I, I think that's, that would be very helpful in meeting that standard of uh, safety for the for vehicles and, and pedestrians. And that's all I have. Rachel, can I just um, ask you to clarify that? So you, you'd want to see on the grass portion of the church property? Is that what I'm understanding? Well, it, there's something that says path, and I don't know what... It's just, there's uh, Rosa Ragosha right there. I mean, there's, I guess I, a lot of people come through that way. It's not technically a path. Um, the parking, and they, they normally do on the sidewalk, and even um, when the church has their bazaars, they park in my driveway, use my driveway, and normally the sidewalk is being used. Um, I guess maybe I shouldn't have put the path there, but you know, I guess I want it to be up front. Some people do cut through there because they, they can park on the side of Bradford Road as well. Um, and you know, they do park on the side, and it, there's three other houses on the street, and there's very minimal traffic on that street. I, I, I do think with cars parked on the side, even if min there's minimal traffic and somebody steps out just as the traffic is coming, that, that creates a problem. So I would recommend that you have some sort of a directional indicator, a sign or whatever directing people to use the sidewalk rather than, than the path or rather than trying to cut through the Rugosa and crossing wherever they can find. It does have that distant potential, but it is a potential if folks are constantly crossing it wherever they feel like it. Thank you for that. Uh, Rick. Um, I guess the only question I had, and maybe it's in here and I just didn't see it, is, is how are you going to indicate that that parking's available? Are you going to... I'm sure people figure it out. Yeah, they have been but, parking over there, and yeah, I guess okay. we, they have been parking over there in the past five years that I've owned it. Okay. And, you know, it's been maybe two or three cars that have parked over there, so yeah. people do know, and they ask, um, you know, if we can park over there, because they do have a host that's out front. And, you know, they do ask, but a lot of them, people have parked over. We've had a friendly okay. relationship about using parking lots. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't know if you were planning on putting any signage or anything out front to indicate that. I don't know if that's... Something that um, I don't have to look at the standards to see if that's something that would even be allowed. But um, yeah, other than that, I I think it's fine. I've been to your grill; it's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. The new owners it will be uh, continued. So um, no, that's all I have. Thank you very much, Roger. Um, so um, you just said that your patrons have been using that church parking lot. So are you, is this all because of the, you want to formalize correct. for the potential sale? Okay. But, right, correct, and have it as a, wait, as a seating area instead of just a waiting area. Okay. Um, I actually um, applaud you and the church for working together on this um, because we had another situation a little while ago where there wasn't cooperation such as that. And so this is helpful. And, um, They've been wonderful to work yeah. with and good neighbors and... We have a great little area down there, so it's we're very fortunate. And, and does the side, <coughs> does the sidewalk continue down? I know it's right by the church. Does it continue down in it front of your? It goes all the way to Bailey. It goes right to the bridge. <coughs> oh, it does. Okay. People that walk okay. from Bailey's and Snowberry and all the other streets. Okay. And it goes all the way up towards past Cannons, all the way down towards the other Bailey's. Okay. And the agreement's going to be an annual agreement. Correct. Okay. I'm all I'm all set. Thank you. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't really have any, uh, I too enjoy dining there on occasions. Um, sounds reasonable, and, and I do, I like when community uh, businesses can work together uh, and solve some problems so that, you know, everybody feels like they can uh, run a business that's profitable and get the turnaround on the tables and, and move forward. So, um, this looks good to me. Thank you. So this is just an advisory opinion from this board. Um, you know, I think I think it would be safe to say that we have a, a positive advise uh, advisement going over to the uh, zoning board, uh, the board of appeals. And I would just kind of caveat that with maybe some discussion between you and the 
the church or you know the, the zoning board of appeals about possibly just exploring maybe some seasonal signage I would say might be helpful um, <coughs> one to kind of protect the church during their their hours and also protect your your business during your hours so a little information for the people that come along but okay. explore it but Certainly. otherwise uh, we'd be happy to set our positive review all right thank, thank you. you appreciate Good it luck. Quick housekeeping, guys. Uh, number 12 has been tabled at the request of the applicant. So if you were here for the uh, F9 Properties LLC for the 374 years run, those cabinets to go. If you were here for that, they're not going to be on tonight's agenda. <clears throat> and then based on how much time these projects keep going, we do have last call at 10.30 p.m. So if you are sitting here waiting for maybe the last item on here, you know, we can't guarantee it gets in. We do our best, but um, just wanted to give you that heads up. Next item tonight. Magenta LLC requests a site plan review for 40 Haggis Parkway Assessor's Map R50, Lot 35. Mel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And you guys have seen this project several times now through the planned uh, review, planned development <laughs> review process. Uh, but as you know, it's in the Haggis Parkway zone, uh, located along the western side of the roadway. <laughs> Uh, so the applicant received master plan approval from the board uh, back in February for a phased project including three buildings and associated infrastructure. So the applicant's in front of the board tonight with a site plan for phase one of the project, uh, including a 10,000 square foot building with two 5,000 square foot units for lease. As the board may recall, one of the primary elements discussed during the master plan review was the importance of coordinating the proposed driveway entrance along Haigus Parkway with the Scarborough Downs redevelopment project. The applicant is proposing a full access driveway along Haggis Parkway outside of the main DOT designated control of access for the property, uh, requiring approval by the main DOT. Uh, given the importance of coordinating the driveway with the future access roads road into the Scarborough Downs property, uh, staff recommends that the applicant take a look at how the driveways uh, could be aligned in the future. The applicant should be sure to discuss any coordination that has taken place uh, between your team and the Scarborough Downs team tonight. Staff would like to point out that the zoning ordinance requires graphic representations of how the development will look upon completion for any project located in the Haigus Parkway District. Uh, so these graphics will need to be uh, provided with future submissions. The board may also recall approving the rain garden stormwater treatment areas within the required 15-foot landscape buffer strip. Um, and staff's comfortable with that as long as the ap applicant provides uh, adequate planting provisions outside of the rain gardens. Um, and then finally, the applicant has provided some building elevations, uh, which I believe the board has seen last time. Uh, staff has provided a host of review comments on this element to ensure the design meets the town's design standards. Uh, there are a number of remaining elements that need to be addressed by the applicant's team, as noted in the review comments, but at this point, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Kerry? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Kerry Anderson, Magenta LLC. I want to address some of the items that uh, Jamel's made reference to and items that are more to the site plan and engineering. Steve Bushy from Laurel Palmer can, <laughs> uh, can, can answer those, hopefully satisfactorily. Um, I do want to ask uh, one of the comments uh, at the end of the um, staff comments was uh, regarding the, uh, the access uh, or change of, uh, excuse me, change of, um, change of access and needing to see approval on that. Uh, we have been here uh, before the board a number of times and I would like to ask tonight that uh, you give us uh, a final approval if that's the only item that's left, uh, given that we should have a approval from DOT and Steve Bushy has spoken with them. We did lose probably a couple months, maybe even three. I know the process was protracted, uh, trying to um, get together with the Scarborough Downs team and. Mm -hmm come up with a access that worked for, for both of us. 
and I'm sure they had reasons on their end why they why they couldn't meet with us. Um, at one at some point, obviously, we had to move forward, and we made that decision about uh, a little over a month ago. Given that we just got to go, and and I'm sure whatever reasons they have um, uh, are important on their end, and but uh, we we did in good faith take the time to try and work that out before we came in with the location that we have now. So I'm hoping that given that, uh, the board would see it uh, to allow us to uh, move forward with um, needing to see maybe staff review that final approval. And talking with Steve, he's had communications with them that everything uh, should be when they meet for their right-of-way committee. Uh, they see no issues. Um, uh, so I just wanted to make sure that um, I get that in there as far as that goes. Uh, the other points that I guess I'll talk about are architecture and the board that you have that's up here right now is, is kind of where after a few iterations of, uh, if you may recall, this is not the first elevation that was brought to the board. This was in taking the comments from early on and trying to come up with something that uh, was progressive, um, was good looking, and um, and uh, would would work within the uh, within the district out there. While I wish the board had uh, different feelings about uh, the orange, um, mm -hmm. I do understand and the concern and and um, the the orange that we ended up settling on was a uh, was a terracotta, which was kind of more of an earth tone color after the last uh, meeting we had with the board and and uh, talking about that. But uh, we have um, set that aside, but I just wanted to bring it up for reference. Then we put this right here together in, um, uh, this was done uh, over the last couple days to, uh, to address the comments about reflective colors and whatnot. And the, the panels that you see right around the glazing areas and these accent panels right here, those were going to be of a galvalum uh, material, which is a reflective material. It, um, again, trying to be progressive and, um, and have it uh, kind of presented that way, that was where we uh, you know, kind of ended up on that. We also tried to address the comment about the back of the building, the westerly side, and having it be a blank wall. There is a door here, and there's a door here, and what we've done is we've changed the, uh, the metal type and the metal color along those areas trying to uh, address that comment. It is an area that does have a buffer directly behind it. It's wooded. and. We've also provided a buffer in the landscaping plan to further, um, I guess, uh, uh, keep that buffered from the adjacent property. And this is kind of where we are now. There's no reflective material in here. These accent panels here are of a uh, matte finish along with the same material that's on the mostly the body of the building. The black areas are glazing areas, which is, you know, windows. And these areas, as you may recall, uh, which are an accent panel, they are the same size as what these glazing panels are here, so that if the use uh, dictates it, they can be swapped out. So this could be glass, this could be glass to coincide with these other glazed areas. But uh, we essentially have three colors here going on. We've got the slate gray, the charcoal gray, and the white, if we eliminate the galvalum uh, for those accent panels. And I think that this hopefully uh, addresses the board's concerns about the materials that we're using. We're trying to, and I think it looks very good, uh, even though it is a metal building, with using different materials, different textures, and whatnot. Another comment that came in, and I don't quite understand it, but it was talked about along the flat-roofed areas wanting to see a break in the horizontal 
areas and um, the building is 125 feet long. It's, it's 80 feet across and then, excuse me, 80 feet deep and then 125 feet long. And we do have these two parapeted areas, so we are breaking up the horizontal nature of, of the building there in that regard there. Um, I think that is, that is it. I'd be happy to answer any questions about this if there are any. Uh, and hopefully this uh, is more in keeping with what the board's looking for. Thanks, Karen. Uh, so we do have an opportunity for public comment on this one if anyone is interested in speaking. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Rachel, do you want to kick this off for us? Sure. Um, I, I do like the, the, the design there. I, I have a question. A, the original, during the original presentation, one of the things you had talked about perhaps was having three different accent colors. Uh, if if you got to the three buildings, is that still your thought? And this is the first that you're, you're choosing white basically as the first, or are you all the buildings going to be the same? No, no. I I heard you loud and clear on that. You wanted different buildings on the different sites, and we intend to do that. Different colors on different colors. Okay. Yes, different colors. Um, the other question that I have is: it, Does this development have a name? You're going to have to talk about signage. What are you going to actually call it? And then you need to think about identifying each building, which I suppose you can do by colors, but it might be a better way to do that. Had no, uh, had not thought about a name for it. The, the location is 40 Higgis Parkway, and um, the buildings would just be differently numbered, but hadn't really thought about anything really more than that. I will point out that I didn't, show you the light, incidentally, that would go above the sign. It's a signage, signage, we haven't shown any signage because we don't know what a tenant would want to use and obviously there's a sign ordinance that they'd have to follow. So um, when it gets to that point, they'd have to request a permit and that would have to be approved. But this is the light that um, would cast back on the signage area to light it up. So that is the, the light that we're looking okay. to use. But um, hadn't thought about anything beyond that, no. Uh, and I, I noticed that you did include some wildflower, wildflower ground cover uh, in a couple of places. But um, what I haven't seen, it would be, certainly be helpful, is the property closest to the, the salt pump. What's at some point, you get to the end of the buildings, and then what's between the end of the buildings and the start of the salt pump? So there is that, uh, that field area that we're going to plant the wildflowers okay. and that you referenced before, and then there is a small, of course, that area is full of stumps. So it's kind of a non-buildable area. That's the reason why we're avoiding it and, and focusing mm -hmm. mostly on the northern part of the site. Um, but uh, when you go between the last building on the last site and then you go to the field area that's where the wildflower plants would be, from there headed towards a salt pump, there is a vegetated, there is a wooded area. It's kind of a low wooded area. It's not, it's not ideal for building. You could make it buildable. It's just not very big. And uh, that's probably about six to 700 feet away from the last building. So. I think the plan right now would be to just uh, plant it with uh, wildflowers and, and uh, nothing more than that. It would be helpful to see that in the, on the landscape plan, what you're doing with the whole, your plan for the whole property okay. in terms of that landscaping at least. Okay, so um, we could put that on when uh, one of the other two buildings comes forward. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Jen, um, I had a question, but I think I just answered it. Can you just confirm that the two figures that were submitted for um, indicating uh, truck turning, it looks like one is, one's for a smaller truck and the other is for the WV40, a larger, like a larger tractor trailer truck, is that correct? Yeah, Steve can... Can talk okay. to that point. It's just really small, that's all. 
Um, and then the, just one observation on this. It looks like you may not need it, but um, at the far left of this, sort of the turnaround area for the whole site, it, it looks like there's there may be some of that paved area that you're showing over the property line. Um, but it also doesn't look like any of the trucks are needing that space for turnaround, so you may just reconsider. Are you talking Sorry, that point right is, there? No, on the, I'm looking on at the, the, on the, the site overall, plan. yeah, the full, the full site. So this would be sort of to the south of building three, all the way. Under. Okay, there, there is an encroachment from the abutter. He does have, um, he has encroached upon my property with uh, plantings. I don't remember seeing any pavement, but there could be. There is an encroachment over there, though. And it is to the south of Building 3. Okay. Um, so that's sort of the overall. And then the only other question I had about this layout was that um, it looks like there's a ramp that you're proposing that's sort of heading in the direction of the driveway. Do you follow that? So if you're, <coughs> if you're walking towards Hagus Parkway, right there. Am I reading that right? Is that intended to be a ramp? That's a it it, it does for for eighty yes for uh, for wheelchair access there it does ramp up. There's a break in the curb there. Curb goes to flush and uh, allows you to a wheelchair to get up onto the sidewalk area there. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so just curious about um, what the what the utility what the thought is behind that ramp. Is it intended to be? Is there intended to be a crosswalk there across that driveway? or a receiving ramp on the other side? Um, and if so, you know, what's, where is that, where is that route heading? Um, that's one point. And the second one is that I'm sure that that radius is large in order to accommodate truck turning into the site. Um, but it's also, would also be likely where the first few of those parking spaces would be backing out. And so I just didn't know if there was any opportunity for maybe some some striping there or something to just sort of help identify um, drive aisle from parking space, I guess. Um, the, thought, the thought that if you, if you by chance had a, a larger vehicle or any vehicle entering the driveway and taking that lar that wide swinging right turn at the same time that someone was backing out. Um, if, the tr if the truck needed that full width to, to take the right turn, then they may be in the path of the um, someone backing out. Well, it is, um, it is a 40 foot radius, which is a big radius. Um, and there's a 26 foot wide drive aisle um, which is pretty good size too. I don't think there'd be an issue there, but uh, Steve can answer that better than I can. It would also, that. you know, would have to. That activity would all have to happen at the same time. But when you provide that much space for that to happen, there's just always that risk. That's all. Understood. Yeah, I don't. I think that. Um, and you won't, I, and I understand you won't have that with any of the other buildings just because of how the layout is and the fact that this building kind of positions its, itself in front of that, um, that driveway. If you, I'm not sure how locked in you are to this particular driveway location, um, but if through coordination with the opposing driveway on the other side of Hagus Parkway, for example, you had the opportunity to shift that driveway to the south at all, you may not have that sort of conflict at the, at the entrance to the parking area. Well, I think we're very locked into this, <laughs> this location. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we, we tried uh, to get together with uh, the folks from Scarborough Downs to coordinate that. And, um, and they just weren't ready to, to, to talk about it, and we had to move forward. Um, this is before the, the uh, DOT and the right-of-way division. They've reviewed it. They've, uh, 
given Steve uh, comments that they don't see any issues with it, um, we just kind of need to move, go forward. I mean, it could be, I don't know when they'll, they'll be ready on their end. I, it could be tomorrow, it could be a year from now, it could be longer. Understood. So, um, I don't think that there'd be an issue. I mean, not, I'm not going to say that there wouldn't be an issue when someone's pulling in and someone's trying to back up, but I just think uh, courtesy has to prevail and somebody will stop and somebody will be allowed to continue backing up. Uh, or going forward, and, and, and it'll it'll work itself out. Um, we did also look at the comment about um, wooden guardrail and whatnot along some of the areas. I'm not sure if there's anything that's that's there possibly uh, talked about, but there was the question that came up about putting a wooden guardrail in that area, rather than putting wooden guardrail up that. Um, you know, when you get snow banks that freeze and get covered up and then someone comes and pushes again along later on, we, what we'd like to do there would, would be to basically put boulders there so they won't get moved, they won't get plowed into, they, snow won't get pushed there, and it's more of a natural feature as well. We'd like to do that on one of the, one of the comments I saw that came up on that. But, um, okay, I was going to ask you about the guardrail, but you, obviously you just answered that. Uh, Carrie, just discuss a couple of things, get your opinion on a couple of comments on the staff uh, comments. Um, on the, um, you know, they, they talked about um, Snow storage going into the uh, those rain gardens. Can you talk about that? Well, we the the board has asked that it not happen, so we're we're going to prevent it from happening. Okay, is that where you're going to put the uh, the boulders? That's correct. Okay, that's All what right. we're like. That's what we'd like to do. Okay, um, on the um, just out of curiosity on on the when you're talking to Rachel about the design of the building. Um, I actually didn't mind the orange, but I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> I'm going to go with what they have there now. Um, but on the future ones, are you just basically going to have just some minor, minor differences in like a trim or something like that to distinguish one from the other? No, I don't think it would be. I think it would be more than trim. Um, but um, We, there are we are constrained in trying to make a building look good uh, and building it coming out of it alive. I mean, it has to really be a metal building, so we're challenged with finding colors and different ways of putting them on the building and so that we still get that at the end of the day. Uh, you can look at metal buildings that uh, scream out, I'm a metal building, I'm an industrial building, and then you can do metal buildings that say, wow, that's nice. I mean, they're, they're doing residential buildings these days out of metal. So you really have to take the time and effort to find the right materials and the right places and whatnot. And, you know, I think we've done that on this building here. We'll, we'll get it right on the other two, but it'll have to be more than just changing you know, copings and trims. I think we'll have to do it with accent colors, probably body colors. Uh, same thing that we, we did here. Uh, it'll have to be changed up enough so that it's not the same. The design of the buildings, though, will be basically will be the same as this one here. Those they, the, the actual design of the building, you know, the structure of the building. Uh, it's a, uh, yes, steel structure. Yes, it's a steel structure building. Same with type of roof line and everything like that. Yes. Okay. What right. What are the reasons why? I mean, this, this, the, we'd rather do a flat roof to to begin with, but the other thing that you, we get the benefit of with a flat roof is obviously pitching it all towards the back and then having that kind of treated stormwater area there. So we get Steve can talk more about that than I can, but there's a benefit of of doing that versus having pitched roofs and whatnot. So. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure about this, but just let's see, I'll make sure I'm in the right direction on the map. South is, is um, that's where that fishing area is, isn't it? That would be west. 
Or west? Yeah, north would be towards um, Toll Plaza. South would be towards the Irving Station at Route 1. Yeah. West would be where the ponds are. Yeah, but don't, don't they have access to those ponds right, right, the, right there? They have access to those ponds at the same entrance that's used by the salt pump, oh, which is, is the southerly part of our site. Yeah, okay, okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, I think that's all I have. Uh, Rick. You know, I think most of my questions are covered. My, my biggest concern was what Roger talked about was that snow storage, and I think you've already talked about that enough so that you're aware that it's pretty <coughs> close to the retention ponds. Um, and then, um, you know, right in that area, of course, I think the landscaping that, that you're thinking about will work, so... Do you want me to show you the landscaping plan? Can I see it one more time? Sorry. I didn't, I was looking through the package to try to find it and I could not, I think it was in your earlier package. Yeah. It's essentially plantings Across the back, there was a comment made about the rhododendrons. This is a wooded area, yeah. rhododendrons, and uh, plantings uh, across the, the front as well, along with these areas. We have to maintain that uh, or establish that 25-foot uh, uh, buffer in the front. And, uh, and this was the area that I was talking about where the treatment from the water that essentially hits the roof will sheet off the back into this treatment area right here. Okay. I, I, you did a good job of um, answering the, I thought you did a good job of answering the call of the questions that were asked, so. That's all I have. Thank you, Rick. Other Rick. Um, yeah, I'm uh, content with uh, the comments made and your answers to uh, uh, the last time you were here. I was just looking over the photometrics um, for this and was wondering if you might want to consider some bollards or something on those uh, two front where the ramp is on the front parking lot to kind of, it looks like you've got some lower light levels in those areas that might want to uh, do a little accent on that because your only source of light is coming from the wall packs on the corners. And I'm just wondering if maybe because this could be used with a handicap that we might want to put some of those bollards in and, and do a little bit of light, down, down light. Um, of course, the ordinance says you've got to have cutoff, full cutoffs, and your, your photometric reflects that. Um, that's my only comment. So, um, you know we, know, we know that you still need a, a DOT permit in hand before we can actually even move this to the next step. So that said, I think you have an opportunity here, and I know this roadway entrance is going to be, you know, it is one of the major issues right now, is figuring out whether, you know, that's the appropriate spot for it. And I think there's an opportunity for you as an applicant, and we know the other applicant's team is here, and I've heard that you may have better access to the applicant's team now. That would be <laughs> quite accurate, I would assume. Take those three weeks to try to have that vision for Scarborough. And I encourage both of you, take that 30,000 step foot back and look down on the earth and say, well, how can we, can we somehow make these stars align a little bit better? Because in the end, you're the applicant, this is your project, I respect that. And you're gonna put your driveway where you feel it's best, I get that. But talking dollar wise, I think it's worth it for both parties here. If there's some, on, you know, an alternate alignment that's forced upon the situation based on what comes down the road, you both benefit from trying to talk it out now. So I strongly encourage you just to at least have that conversation, but fully respecting you as the applicant first in the door with this, you know, that's the best <coughs> spot for your driveway as you see it. I'd take the time and talk with them real quick though and, and really let us know. Um, get your permits. There are still a lot of um, cleanup details I think you've got to work through real quick. I do like the architectural um, style of the building. I mean, it's a metal building, and I think you've done an incredibly good job trying to make a metal building look pretty good. So I appreciate the, the color change um, to some extent. Um, not that I hate orange, it's just 
unless it's U-Haul, I would prefer to see it a different, you know, different color there. But I think you've done, you're, you're almost there. I mean, you're sniffing the finish line. So I just encourage you to, to really just kind of press forward, really try to make that connection, see if you can iron out, get that permanent hand, and we'd like to see you back here and hopefully get you your approval. Okay. Fair enough? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, SM, I'm sorry, SDMC Development LLC requests a site plan review for 7 Mill Commons Drive, Assessor's Map U52, Lot 3. Jamel? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We're back in the Crossroads Plan Development, uh, back to Phase 1 of the Scarborough, oh, Scarborough Downs Redevelopment Project. Uh, so the applicant's <laughs> proposing a 9,500 square foot, 12 bed memory care assisted living community on in lot three within the approved phase one mixed residential subdivision. The proposal also includes 24 parking spaces, a drop off area, courtyard, gardens, and outdoor space. Uh, while the site plan standards typically seek to avoid multiple curb cuts along a public street, staff is actually generally comfortable with the proposed one way drop off area, given the low travel speed along Mill Commons Drive and the density of development adjacent to the property. Uh, the board should be sure to provide feedback in regards to the proposed uh, design of the drop-off area. <coughs> Staff does recommend that the applicant provide additional pedestrian infrastructure on the property, including an additional sidewalk um, and some benches adjacent to the proposed garden beds, uh, as noted in staff comments. And in regards to the proposed landscaping, um, staff did make a comment about the applicant providing additional uh, deciduous trees along the drop-off area to provide for more shade and visual interest. And finally, given the site will be the first portion of development, I guess for now at least, within the Scarborough Downs development traveling from Route 1, the applicant should ensure that the parking area uh, along the side of the building will be screened from Scarborough Downs Road upon completion. So staff has reviewed the materials. Uh, draft motion with conditions that mirrors staff comments has been drafted uh, for the board's consideration tonight. Thanks, Jim. Yep. Let's approach the podium and yourself and the project, please. I'm Lynn Peel. I'm a Scarborough resident who lives over in the Pleasant Hill area with my husband and two kids. I'm also the founder of The Mooring and one of the owners um, and am really, really excited to bring this concept to Scarborough. We have um, The Mooring on Foreside, which is a 12-bed boutique memory care facility um, in Cumberland, Maine right now. Uh, we opened that in May of 2017 and it's a really unique model of care where we've designed a purpose-built <clears throat> home that can accommodate 12 people living residentially but operating like a family um, and, and accessing the community as regular residents um, as opposed to locked um, individuals in a facility. We're really, really excited about our opportunity in Scarborough to take our program one step further, integrating into a community um, and really kind of making the program a whole um, concept of living amongst other people and joining the community while still providing the care that the folks that live in our building need. Um, so I'm going to turn it over right now, but I want to thank you all for having us, and we're very excited about this um, development. <coughs> Thanks, Lynn. Dan Bacon with Grohl Palmer here on behalf of Lynn and, and her team um, to present the site plan for for the mooring. I figured out how to get this running. You have to plug it into the wall, too, not just the computer. Nice. Um, so I'm going to jump right into to this site plan. Uh, I know the board's seen this graphic and the plans have gone along with it a, a number of times. But this is the phase one part of the downs, the mixed residential area. Um, actually, a couple of new board, mem new board members haven't seen it uh, as often as others. Um, so. So this lot in this site is lot number three. It's at the southern southern end of um, the phase one development. And um, it's, it's really part of the Mill Commons community and neighborhood. So it's, it has access off of Mill Commons Drive, um, right off of the Downs Road, which is currently under construction. Um, and it's designed to be part of um, the duplex condominiums, the, the eight unit condominiums that are under construction today um, in the southerly area of, 
of phase one. Um, and Lynn and, and Paul, um, who are coming forward with this project, have been thinking about it and working with the team for, I think, close to a year. So, um, <coughs> lot three and its, its layout um, and also the design of how it integrates with Mill Commons Drive has been very deliberate. Um, so even though you're seeing the site plan for the first time, the driveway locations were actually laid out when the board approved the Lot 2 subdivision um, late last year, which is now under construction. Um, and the, the building design has been um, <coughs> deliberately, laid, deliberately laid out to be right across from the park. That's part of, of Lot 2. And which is which is in this location here, and so this is this is lot three. Um, so I'm going to jump to kind of more detailed information, <coughs> uh, but suffice to say, uh, the subdivision process looked at a lot of the components of at least the front end of this lot and how it interacts uh, with No Commons Drive. Also, DEP approved um, this lot in terms of stormwater um, and a small wetland impact uh, to enable this design. So the state permitting is in place for, for this lot and awaiting uh, planning board site plan review. In terms of some specifics around the building, um, as Lynn mentioned, it's a 12 bed um, assisted living or memory care um, community. It's about 9,500 square feet. Um, and the building design is, is replicates their, their Cumberland facility, which is the one you see on the screen here. Um, the orientation is just flipped a little bit, but it's essentially the same architecture, same aesthetic from the street. Um, and it's been designed to be residential in scale, as you can see. Um, the, really, the kind of the shorter side of the building um, is facing the street. The, the longer um, aspect of the building is set back so that Again, it's more in scale with the duplexes that are right nearby in the residential nature of, of, um, of Lot 2 and, and the duplexes and the mill commons. <coughs> in terms of the, to the site layout, I mentioned the driveway locations. Um, these were laid out as part of laying out um, Mill Commons Drive. We deliberately lined up the primary ingress and egress um, to the parking lot and the drop-off to be right across the street from the access to the parking behind the, uh, the eight-unit gar garden apartments or condos that are currently under construction uh, up in this location. Um, the drop-off is designed to be one-way. Uh, we added uh, one-way arrows um, onto this plan in response to staff comments to reinforce the one-way pattern. Um, this drop-off is a kind of a key programmatic component of the site plan um, for uh, family to drop off residents, uh, for guests to drop off residents. Um, but I think even more importantly, there's going to be a, a small bus on site that's going to serve the residents. Um, and this is the, is the primary loading and unloading area for, um, for the residents of the, of the community. Um, so, as mentioned in staff comments, there's two curb cuts shown here. Um, uh, we think that functionally it's really primary, it's really one. People are gonna come in and out of this one and then you know, occasionally use the drop off. Um, but we appreciate staff's uh, concurrence on allowing for the two curb cuts, which isn't commonly allowed for. Um, but given the low volume nature of the site, uh, we think it'll work quite well. Um, in terms of the parking, since we're talking about access, um, there's a 24 space parking lot uh, proposed. Um, that's 24 space is really more for special events and occasional use. On a day-to-day -day basis, we expect anywhere from six to 10 cars to be in the parking lot at any one time. Uh, typically, there's you know, six to eight staff um, that are there during the day. And then um, there are uh, other kind of therapists, medical providers that come and go, and, and guests. Um, but on average, in their Cumberland facility, there's around six to ten cars that are you know, there during the daytime, fewer at night. Um, so it's really a low volume, low trafficked site. Um, and for part of that reason, um, we've actually uh, not proposed a sidewalk along uh, the parking lot. 
um, and that was brought up by staff is you know consider a sidewalk along the parking lot and it's it's not for not kind of supporting pedestrian connections um, but but Lynn and Paul have thought a lot about the importance of um, walkways really for the residents um, so rather than investing heavily in a sidewalk for those that are kind of able-bodied to um, get to and from the parking lot. The, the focus has really been more kind of walkways to the other amenities on the site or within the Mill Commons neighborhood. So there's, there's walkways kind of deliberately shown uh, from the front door of the facility, which is here, um, out to the sidewalk within Mill Commons. And the crosswalk is, was reviewed previously by the board to get to the park across the street, uh, really for the um, use and enjoyment of the residents and, and staff um, I know that they're looking at the side and are, are um, landing here in part because it can be part of a neighborhood and part of a community and they can have access to the, the walkways and the future trails <coughs> planned in the downs and be part of a neighborhood which is a bit different than the Cumberland facility which is a standalone uh, operation. There's also walkways um, from this, this is really the only entrance for day-to-day -day use in and out of the site, or excuse me, out of the building. Um, there's a walkway planned to serve the drop-off, but also to get over to the gardens, um, which residents um, will be able to use um, on, a, on a daily, in the nice seasons, on a daily basis, and have good access to that. Um, and there's significant kind of walkways within the enclosed lawn patio area. So they they would prefer to, to sort of heavily invest in those walkways um, and then um, not do a walkway along the sidewalk in favor of landscaping and not kind of crowding this um, outdoor patio and think that with the, the low volume of traffic coming into a small parking lot that, that it's reasonable and safe to, to, to walk in the, the drive aisle for the spaces on the side of the parking lot. Um, Beyond that, in terms of the, the building layout, um, as I mentioned, the building is intentionally shown on the, on the right side of the site. Um, in the front of the buildings, uh, intentionally lined up with the park across the street. Um, and also is pulled close to the street so that it matches in with the other homes in the neighborhood. Also, this configuration is very deliberate so that the residence rooms um, generally have views towards the woods and towards nature. So the residence rooms will be along the east side of the building um, and then along the south side of the building, both of which um, face the woods. And that's what they have in Cumberland and that's their, their goal with the building layout. Um, and also to be away, away from, intentionally away from uh, the Scarborough Downs Road, which isn't gonna be busy um, just with the completion of phase one, but over time it's going to be um, used more and more to get to the center of the project. So they, they want the facility to be close to the Downs Road um, for access, but the building focused on the other side of the site for, uh, for the residents and for a quieter setting. Um, to shield the parking so that you know, the parking isn't overly visible from the Downs Road or from uh, Mill Commons Drive, um, there is a landscape program, uh, a combination of the street trees along the Downs Road <coughs> are improved as part of the subdivision, um, coupled with some landscaping and, and trees um, next to, you know, next to the parking lot. And there's also a wetland finger that comes up in that area, and that's a wetland that's not going to be disturbed, so that's going to have vegetation uh, in it as well. Um, and then there's going to be the really the kind of a garden program um, that'll have some raised beds and some ornamental trees that are on the corner to be an attractive corner of the project. <coughs> um, so we think this layout works well for visually uh, along the Downs Road, but also kind of for the, the program of, of the mooring in terms of where the building is, screening and, and parking. Um, other than that, um, I would say that the staff had some comments about lighting, you know, recognizing this is a, a residential area, um, and we've talked about that. Um, and the plan is to, on the east side of the building, um, there's only going to be um, 
kind of wall-mounted, building wall-mounted lights that will only be activated by sensors at night, so they're going to be off unless um, occasionally there might be a staff person that um, once, once a night or twice a night needs to use this back walkway um, to go from the back of the building to, this is uh, where the dumpster enclosure is, and trash receptacle. Um, and that light will come on, and that light will go off after it's used. So this side of the building is going to be dark, but for very occasional use. Um, Rocky also reminded me that the duplex design, this is a duplex here. Um, the, the design of the side of the duplexes um, does not have any windows in the side of the building in terms of bedrooms. There are two bedrooms on that side of these units, but the windows are uh, facing the street and facing the back. So the side that faces the mooring won't have windows. So people will be disturbed at night by, by the, the light that may go on. Um, in terms of the parking lot lighting, um, it's pretty important to have the lighting on the building side lit um, all night because staff do come and go for shift changes. Um, so the parking lot lighting on this side, uh, they really would like to have, have those lights operational at night. The, the parking lot light on the other side can be um, put on a timer so that it goes off at a you know, 9 or 10 o'clock at night <coughs> so that it's not impacting um, surrounding residences. Um, so we think that that kind of balances safety and, and, and needs for our staff with um, having reduced lighting levels at night that um, turn off lights where, where appropriate. <coughs> in, terms of, in terms of utilities um, and, and stormwater, when, when the lot two subdivision was laid out, water and sewer are, are in Mill Commons uh, Drive and are stubbed out to this site in the proper location to, to connect to the building. Um, and both of those plans are approved through Sanitary District and um, Portland Water District. So the, those approvals are in place. We have been talking to the Sanitary District about the different grease, tra um, grease trap alternatives, um, and Paul's working closely with Dave, there's a condition of sanitary district approval that it be provided, so um, that's ongoing, and, and they'll, uh, we'll meet um, su the superintendent's needs for a grease trap. Um, stormwater, like I mentioned, is approved already through DEP. It's a combination of um, an LID approach here, uh, focal point, Stormwater technology similar to what's else is being installed in phase one, coupled with, and that'll handle the stormwater from the parking lot. Um, drip strips will be managing stormwater from the roof of the building. So that is consistent <coughs> with the DEP approvals and the planning board approvals from um, earlier on the subdivision side of things. Um, signage. And this is showing a couple key elements. I, the visual before showed the building from the street, which would be very similar to this, um, with uh, gray shingle siding, white trim, uh, dark gray, um, dark gray roofing. You'll see the signage is shown to the right. Um, in the plan, I think it showed a 10-foot sign height. Um, and we'd like to bring that actually down lower to eight feet to meet the um, town's ordinance in terms of a five-foot setback for signs. So with that adjustment, I think we're complying with the sign regulations. And that would, be go, that would go just before the driveway into the site. Um, there's a shed uh, proposed on site uh, next to the garden area. And it's going to mimic their Cumberland shed. And, and the colors and materials will match the building. Um, and a, image of that is shown up on the screen and was included in your package. The back of the building, which would uh, face the downs road, is going to be landscaped so that you're not staring at a back of a back of a shed. Um, and if the board has detailed questions about <laughs> the landscaping, um, Sashi Meisner is here from Gowran Turgeon who, who did the landscaping plan. Also, um, Worked on the architecture for the Scarborough site and the Cumberland, uh, the Cumberland site that exists today. So the planting plan, the site plan, 
are, are shown here. And these are a couple of images um, of other perspectives over the Cumberland site um, with a, some fencing along the drop off there. Um, the enclosure for that lawn area and patio um, has a um, sort of a decorative a white fence um, and is a secure space for, for residents. Um, and it's, we've re reviewed that with staff, also the fire department, in terms of access. <coughs> but that'll be a secure space. Um, and it, it'll appear similar to these images here. And to get a sense for the interior of that patio space in that lawn area, that, again, very similar to Cumberland, it's going to have an outdoor patio area, patio area for sitting. Um, there's a fire pit. There's um, some lawn. And there's going to be a lands landscaping program within, within that enclosed area. The other images on the screen show what are very similar raised gardens and raised beds at their Cumberland facility that they um, will be moving forward with here in Scarborough as well. Um, I think a, a, a final comment staff had in staff report around the garden area was a place for sitting. And um, Paul and Lynn want to provide seating accommodations for the garden area and also for the for the patio area as shown here um, but would would rather it be um, really based on the program of what their needs are kind of on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis um, rather than kind of permanent installation of uh, benches they have Adirondack chairs that they want to have out there that they want to be able to supplement add to the Adirondack chairs, excuse me, add to the number of chairs to suit the needs of the residents, um, move them to other locations. So they want to have accommodations, um, but not necessarily to the point of like showing on the site plan and, and having them be permanent fixtures. So um, if that works for the board, I think that would work well for their, their operation and how they could use the garden area. So um, I think that's the high points. Um, of, of this facility. Uh, again, very similar to Cumberland, um, but customized for this site and customized for the neighborhood to fit in well and be a kind of a key component to, to the Mill Commons um, development project. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Um, so I'll, I'll jump in on this uh, real quick. Um, <clears throat> as far as the uh, sidewalk, and this is something that uh, I'll need the rest of the board uh, as you go through your comments to weigh in on. <clears throat> it is right now a uh, condition of the uh, draft motion we have available um, is the installation of a sidewalk along that parking lot line. I guess my my bigger question would be, is there access to the western part of that building? Is there a door feature? You see what I'm talking about? Kind of bottom part of the parking lot, western. Yeah, is there a door in that, not that part, but Yes, that part. Is there an entryway there? No. No. So staff, visitors, whoever it is, they are going to have to get all the way back up to um, the roadway and then use the sidewalk to get over into the front entrance, correct? Staff is, you know, the six staff that are there on a daily basis, they're likely to park here. So they're going to walk, as we anticipate, they're going to walk down the parking lot and and walk to either through the striping by the handicapped spaces, get to the sidewalk, or they're going to walk up to here. They'll probably walk in this location here. Yeah, and I mean, I guess my, my greater concern is, you know, who's parking at the bottom of that, that long strip, if there's visitors or who else, you know, are they, it's a, it's a lot of walking through, it's a long way around to get into the building, and uh, people like tend to look for that shortcut, so I was kind of glad to hear that that garden area seems to be fully enclosed. Um, that must be a gated door where you have the walkway intersecting the, the fence, is that correct? Yes. That, that's a gated door. That's a gated door, it's secure, it's locked by the staff for the safety of the residents. Um, I mean, Lynn or Paul can elaborate in more detail if you have sort of operational questions, but yes, that's typically gated and locked unless staff's opening it for use by residents. Um, okay. So the, the daily, Ingress to the building and, and leaving the building occurs at the front of the building. Okay. 
So as far as uh, the rest of the board, you should all each weigh in on whether or not you believe uh, sidewalks appropriate uh, for, the, for the length of that parking lot or halfway to the length of the parking lot, kind of get a sense there, or not at all. Um, just go with the applicant. Yes. Uh, yeah, Dan, <coughs> excuse me. What's the rationale for not having the extended driveway, I mean, uh, sidewalk? Because I'm thinking the people who most likely may go to see these people are going to be maybe older people and instead of have them walking. I'm thinking of um, the um, hospice and how that's set up. And there's, there's sidewalks up there, I believe. Yeah, I think the, I mean, the hospice is a much larger facility. Well, I understand that, yeah. but I mean, I'm thinking about the, the, the type, and, and maybe you would, you would know certainly better than I would, but I'm just thinking of the people who would possibly come to visit. They would, I would think they might be tend, they tend to be older people maybe, or no? You have to uh, approach the podium, please, and just, thanks. Um, in Cumberland, they're actually not. So it's usually adult children of people who are living in the community um, or spouses of folks that live there. Um, who are in their 60s right now. So that's sort of the mix. Um, and also people from um, outpatient therapy departments. So um, at the current moment um, in Cumberland, I can count the number of times people have even parked at the bottom of that parking lot on one hand. And it's been our Christmas parties and um, anniversary party in May. So it, we just don't use the bottom of the parking lot. And again, sort of wanted to save our resources for making all the walkways that we did at the top. Okay. Answer your question. So you have the same arrangement up there that, that you're proposing for here? Well, it's, it's configured differently. In terms differently. of the parking, yeah. Um, the, the walk is actually much further in Cumberland. But um, if we have any elderly visitors, they're usually in the handicapped parking. Okay. Thank you. Um, the other item <clears> they <throat> like this board to weigh in on is um, whether or not they find the pedestrian benches being affixed to the plan versus the Adirondack chairs. Um, I'll put my two cents in on each of these before I start asking the board to chip in. Um, and actually, before I get too far ahead of myself, we do have some public comment to do, but uh, for, for what it's worth, uh, I think there's probably some sort of compromise here with the sidewalk, maybe bringing it down to the halfway point rather than the full stretch. Um, but I do feel like that's, that's a long way to walk, um, especially in the winter. You, you know, I think a, you know, a sanded, a salted sidewalk versus a, you know, a sloppy park, you know, parking lot, it's a little safer um, if it's maintained well. So that would be my two cents on the sidewalk. On the benches, I'm perfectly fine with what the applicant's proposing, which is, you know, you configure your seating internally how you, you see fit. So um, that said, I do got to get to public comments, so we'll open it up now. Um, anyone wishing to speak on this item, please approach the podium. All right, seeing none, closing public comment. Uh, Roger, do you want to? Sure. Do you um, I, I think it looks very attractive, and uh, I think it's going to be a great addition. Is this, um, this is going to be a secured building, I assume? Yes. Okay. And so if any, any re you, you refer to them as residents, mm -hmm. they were to go outside, there'd be a CNA, a CNA or somebody with them, right? Yes, out the front door. Um, the way that we've configured the building, the, the backyard is secure, so people, in the good weather, we can keep those doors open so people can come and go as they please. The, the backyard will be secure. Um, and then, yes, they will have a care partner with them if they were to exit the front door. Okay. Um, the, um, and I, <coughs> is it going to be a private pay? Yes. Okay. Um, no, I, I think it looks terrific and, I, and a great entrance into the whole, the whole development. So. Thanks, I'm satisfied with the half sidewalk too. <laughs> You're satisfied with the half sidewalk too. Jen. Um, I do. Th think that there would be value in some additional sidewalk, although I appreciate um, you knowing your business best and the current activity that you're able to witness from having another facility, but echo other comments about winter access and, um, you know, just if you had someone 
wheeling something in, whether it be a wheelchair visitor or a cart of files or something like that, a stroller, who knows. Um, but a lot of times, that, especially in the winter, I do think that can be easier on a sidewalk. Um, but, but also, I think the comment's interesting about um, obviously being careful to, it sounds as though you're being careful about the walkways provided and how they relate to your residents in particular. And so um, if maybe there's a different compromise in material or something like that to differentiate that walk space from a place that would be just accessible for people visiting the facility versus residents traveling in a different way. That's all. Um, and I also agree that uh, putting, you know, seating where you see fit seems appropriate to me. Um, I also noticed that it's it's very apparent that it looks like the, the fencing around the courtyard area was very intentional, but it did it doesn't look like the fencing around the garden area is fully enclosed, and I was just wondering why that was. Um, because because they're going to be crossing the parking lot, um, we they will always be with somebody on that side of the parking lot, um, and we wanted that open to the neighborhood. Right now in Cumberland, it's the same way, and we have this beautiful relationship with the neighboring, even though we can't see them, they come down and they'll pick the weeds every once in a while, and it's just more of a community space that we're hoping people will see us out there and maybe stop by and have a conversation. That's great, I think that's nice. <laughs> I didn't know that, but I'm glad I asked. Um, Um, other questions? Oh, it looks like there are two, you're proposing two detectable warning panels in the sidewalk area adjacent to the drop-off zone, uh, but not, for example, at either driveway entrance at Mill Commons Drive, and I just, I wasn't sure if there was um, a reason for that. Drew Gag and Coral Palmer, engineer. Um, those are under construction currently, so they're not shown on this plan, but they're being built with the Lot 2 road, so no comments drive. The driveways are? Uh, the driveway entrances are, and the tip downs for the, the crosswalks are. Okay. But no panels proposed there? No, they are. They're just not shown on this plan. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Um, also, with, um, I think, okay, so the I understand you're making this driveway one um, one way. I think painted arrows will help with that and maybe some additional signage as well. But wondered if, given the fact that it will be one way, if there's the opportunity to narrow it at all, um, just in an effort to reduce some of the um, impervious area. So, um when we talked about the bus earlier, it's actually a large 12 passenger van um, and with handicap access on the side. And um, the bus goes out every <coughs> single day um, in Cumberland. And that loading and unloading process is quite timely. It takes a lot of time, excuse me. Um, so we wanted people to be able to pull through if they needed to while that bus was parked there. So that was, I think, the programming um, wish for that. That programming need and also the fire department is treating that drive drop off and that driveway as one of their sides of access. Um, so they reviewed the layout and we worked with them on kind okay. of balancing the narrowness of that entry into it mm -hmm. while also having the width for what Lynn described and also fire truck turning radius. So, so will that area, how will that, I apologize if it's in here, how will that? Um, parking in that access area be signed, or do you know yet? We've talked a lot about signage, and given the residential kind of character of this project, and the, um, the users of the project generally are very uh, accustomed to the site, so it's, there's not a lot of, it's not a Dunkin' Donuts where you're kind of <laughs> running in for the first time, uh, et cetera, or a high turnover site, so the Van uses the same drop-off all the time. Guests um, 
come and go pretty frequently, and they residents stay there for quite a while. So we're hoping that we don't have to over-sign, just based on the nature of the site um, and people's familiarity with the site, whether they work there or visit often. Rachel. Yeah, um, I, this, look, this is really a gorgeous project. I mean, the work that's, that's been done on it shows a great deal of thought. Uh, in terms of the sidewalk, I would like to see uh, some sidewalk down, down the parking lot for the reasons that our folks here have all, already talked about, and that is during the winter, a sidewalk is certainly a lot better than um, tromping, uh, tromping through a lot of slush. Um, I have no problem with the dual curb cuts. I think the layout of the, um, of the drop-off area, the layout of the crosswalk into the park, it's all very thoughtful. Um, we've taken a great deal of care to integrate, integrate the whole project with the community. I have a couple of questions, and that is um, see, tab 7. Uh, the picture, the rendering of the um, of the shed. Mm. It looks as though there's a there's a gate uh, with two granite supports um, and a walkway. Yeah, why is that gate connected to nothing? Cumberland, um, there's a stone dust pathway that goes to um, that part of the shed um, and leads to our raised bed gardens. Um, so we just sort of wanted to identify where that went um, and make it look pretty. That, so um, this site, we have changed that to uh, um, an awning that will have wisteria or something growing on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> in Arbor, yeah. Um, I noticed uh, that the staff recommended some additional plantings. Um, where did I see that? Additional plantings adjacent to the proposed drop-off area. While I generally encourage more plantings, I'm not actually clear where you could get some. If it's possible to add more, I would encourage that, but We use the. Uh, Can you just the, introduce yourself for the record? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Sashi Meisner with Garen Turgeon Architects, Landscape Architect. Uh, we have the street trees that are along Mill Commons Drive that will be great for casting shade and things like that. Uh, we do have the um, stone wall that goes around by the drop off with the fence, and there'll be perennials and shrubs all in front of there. We didn't want to do too much in front of there because the wall is actually really beautiful, and we didn't want to completely screen that off. Um, we do have a few trees that wrap around the fencing, and then there's uh, um, cherry trees on the inside of the fenced enclosure. So we will, there's probably about five feet or so between the sidewalk and the perennial beds. We're still developing the final plans for those as far as detailing the plants, but it, it will be definitely as, as beefy as we can get it throughout that whole front area. Right. Thank you. Yep. I think uh, I think that's uh, actually all the questions I have. You've done a very very good job of uh, presenting your project. It's it's really lovely. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Rick. Yeah, I have to uh, <coughs> echo Rachel's comments. I think you did a really good job with this presentation and a really good job with the whole layout. So, other than the comments that have already been made by the constituents, I don't really have anything else to add. I, I, I do like um, Nick's idea of putting the benches on the drawing. So, um, yeah, I don't have any other questions. Thanks, Rick. Rick? Um, yeah, I really like uh, the way this is, is positioned within the neighborhood at the Downs and, and how you uh, integrated it into the residential section. Um, this will be a licensed facility um, with a commercial kitchen. They all have their own kitchen in, in each? 
Um, no, there, there will be a centralized kitchen, but it's actually very much a residential um, size kitchen. Our license does require us to have some commercial um, elements to it, like a three-bay sink and a commercial dishwasher, but that's in a back room. The kitchen that you see is like any large home. Um, so you won't have a cooking hood or anything? There is a hood. So would you have a mushroom uh, cap on the roof? for ventilation? <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't believe so, no. 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 It's just a, it's a, um, six, Are there more residential type hoods? It's a, just So it's, it's more like what you have in your home as a yes. hood instead of a commercial uh, with uh, the, the filters and everything like that? Right, there's no fire leader or heavier cooking. Okay. No. Okay. So we could, Technically, you'd have to have an exhaust, and usually that comes out of the roof somewhere. So that's good. So we won't see any of that. No. Um, maybe a compromise for the sidewalk that runs along there is, is, and I don't know the dimensions of that uh, lot area, but maybe wheel stops that would allow a snow blower to go in front of the vehicles, that you can get to that end where where the uh, handicapped parking lots are. Maybe that's an option. Um, I'd be okay personally with that. Um, the raised beds and, and seating, I defer to how your residents uh, do it in, in Cumberland. Um, yeah, and just to be clear on the sidewalk, as we currently show, the sidewalk does serve the, the handicap spaces where it stops is, is there. It doesn't serve the rest of the parking lot. I just right. wanted to clarify that. Um, and in talking to, to, the, to the client and the applicant, you know, given that uh, the first six spaces are the ones that are routinely used, By as, staff. Lynn, yeah, you mentioned as that. Lynn mentioned, um, we could extend that sidewalk down to serve those those daily spaces. It also can serve the spaces across the walkway, too, because I think people are going to come in and they're probably going to also park on the other side <coughs> um, and probably not drive all the way down to the, right. parking, the parking field. So that can handle the day-to-day -day pedestrian uh, traffic coming off the parking lot. If that works for the board, that would work for the applicant. And finally, is there going to be an emergency generator or anything for this facility? Where is that located? Wow. It's located on the right side of the building. Um, you can see a little square in the far right. Um, Oh, all right. I missed that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. I'm good. It looks great. Do you have anything else to add? I know you had a little bit on the other side. Okay. All right. Um, and Angela, did you have anything? Yeah. Um, um, I know I was looking at the draft um, conditions of approval, and I just wanted to point out. Um, just kind of popped in when you're talking about the focal point 16 in the corner. Um, and I, I know in the document it talks about that the memory care is in a list of other structures, including manholes and swales, that they're responsible for the, the maintenance and the annual reporting to the town, which means it's hoping that the board would consider um, having that as a condition for the stormwater agreement. Um, it's under Chapter 419. I know it's in here with the maintenance logs, but it's not really spelled out that they need to enter into that agreement as well so that they can report to the town and we have that recorded document. It's Applicant just part of our ordinance. Seems agreeable. And I think it was we'll meant It was meant to be in there. I think <laughs> yeah. it was just one of those things that would be nice to put it in the condition so we can check it off as we go through the building permit process. Absolutely. Thank you. Sorry. You're Thanks, Angela. <laughs> uh, that said, um, we're kind of modifying a little bit of the draft motion we have here based on what the board has already discussed. Um, it's a, it's a great project. Um, really excited that to see this start to come together. Um, so once he's done uh, scratching, I'll make my motion. <laughs> Sorry, Jamal. No worries. No pressure. No pressure at all. Are no. you done yet? <laughs> <laughs> there was a a little bit more of a chatty person. Perhaps I could have stretched this out a little, but let's just go with that. Right. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so I do have a draft motion, and the motion is uh, I approve, I, I move to approve the project titled The Mooring at the Downs, proposed by SDMC Development LLC, as depicted on the plan set prepared by Goral Palmer, dated 3 18 19, with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings, as stated, and we'll not read all those. Waivers. One, permit the proposed design of the parking area given the amount of the proposed plantings in the general area. And then conditions. One, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the plan set shall be revised to include A, the proposed space and bulk information on the site plan, which is sheet C101. B, a sidewalk along the eastern side of the parking area as discussed with the planning board. C, revise the existing vegetation limits on the site plan, sheet C101, and the landscape plan, sheet L101, to ensure they mirror each other. Got D. That's D. That's D. A stamped landscape plan by a registered landscape architect in Maine. This should be reviewed by the plan and approved by the planning department. E, the standard plan note for referencing the chapter 419 requirements. Two, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall pay, A, pay the traffic impact fees. B, coordinate with the Scarborough Sanitary District in regards to the proposed grease trap on the site. C, execute and record the stormwater maintenance agreement per chapter 419. This shall all be, I'm sorry, yes, this shall all be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Number three, prior to the issuance of a signed permit, the applicant shall provide, provide a reside, revised signage plan per staff review comments memo dated 4819. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Four, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. That is the motion, folks. Okay. I have a second. Is there any discussion? Could I ask a question about the sidewalk? Yes. Um, the board discussed the length of the sidewalk. Is the sidewalk the full length or what we offered as a, a condition to extend it down? I saw some spaces? nodding heads on the, you know, to extend it Six down. Six spaces. Yeah. Okay, I just want to be clear. Six so we're spaces. <laughs> Six spaces, do you want six spaces outlined there or for the record we highlight that that was part of the board discussion and seems to be agreed upon. As long as we're all on the same page, we're, that's fine. Great. So I have a motion, any other discussion on this? No? A second, so all in favor? All opposed? Show that unanimous. Congratulations and good Thank luck. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> all right, we're hitting the two-hour mark, which means it's break time. We shall return in about five to six minutes. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, yeah.
Assessor's map R15, map 78. I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to call on Rick real quick here to go ahead and make whatever disclosure you feel is necessary. Um, I'm the abutter, just so full disclosure. Okay. But um, I like coffee, so. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> but I just thought um, I'd let you know that I am the actual right next door. Okay. It's a short walk. And you don't believe that anything you see here is going to influence your decision making abilities. Uh, no, I look. You know, I looked over the. I looked over the rules and everything, and I participated in the daycare. Um, I talked to Jay, the former planning director, and I talked to Jamal uh, recently. And um, yeah, I, I don't have any financial gain. I don't know the people that are building it, and um, you know, I, I don't feel I should recuse myself. Yeah. Anyone on the board have any concerns regarding this? Well, the, only, the only thing is he couldn't get the daycare in, so now he's got a coffee shop going in. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I thought about it, and honestly, I mean, we got a little time here, but I don't hold everybody up. But, you know, if I recuse myself I'm just from the house next door, <laughs> do I recuse myself from the street, and then do I recuse myself from the town? And if I do that, why am I even here? So, you know, I am a, I am a citizen of the town. I am at a butter. Um, but I... I really don't think that makes... I've looked over the rules. As long as you feel you can objectively, uh, you know, decide on what you've seen yeah. presented to you, then... No, I, pl I plan on holding them to the same standards that we hold. It doesn't seem like to. anyone else on this board has an issue with it, so... We'll just check out to make sure there's no paths going between the two. <laughs> What's that? No walking paths between the two properties. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Jamel, would you like to prime us on this? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so as... The agenda reads, uh, the applicant's here for a, sort of a two-part review, so I'm not sure if we want to tackle site inventory and then master plan, or if you want to do it all at once. I think, let's let's do step by step. Let's do this site, okay. the site plan first, okay? So just a quick overview. Uh, this is located in the TVC2 zoning district at the corner of County Road or Route 22 and Sock Road Street. Uh, the applicant's in front of the board for a site inventory and analysis review. Uh, this review and a master plan review are required for projects located in this zone um, that include a restaurant with drive-through service. So the site inventory and analysis is intended to provide the applicant, board, and staff with a better understanding of the overall site and opportunities and constraints that the natural and built environment create for the development of the site. The review of the site inventory does not result in a formal approval, denial of the application, but the board should be sure to in to be sure to determine if the information provides a clear understanding of the site and identifies opportunities and constraints that will guide the utilization of the site. Uh, so given that the site includes no unsuitable soils and was analyzed as part of a site plan approval granted by the board in 2017, uh, the main consideration for this uh, item is that the Ralph Tem Homestead is located on the property and is listed as a historical property locally. So the applicant uh, should be sure to coordinate with the town's historic Preservation Committee prior to formal uh, site plan submission. And the applicant should discuss their proposed use, uh, future use of the historic property with the board. So I have. Thanks. Yeah, and just to reiterate, this board has actually already seen a site inventory analysis on this property. So uh, I would say, you know, really just kind of try to focus on that house and your intentions with it. Keep it kind of narrow at this point, um, unless another board member brings up an aspect Maybe we missed the first time out. Okay. All right. My name is John Kuczynski, the CBS. Um, as, we, as you've already seen, the site inventory, we have pretty much no issues. Um, the Ralph Tim House, we're saying to be where it is at ID. We have no plans for that right now. We're trying to, in the master plan, to put in a, a room with Joe's restaurant in the southwest corner of the site without interfering with that existing property. There's an existing tree with a stone plaque and also maintained. That's it. That was as brief as you can get. Does anyone have any questions on the site inventory analysis? Hey, uh, on, that, on that house, <coughs> if I recall, the uh, Historic Society couldn't find anybody to buy it, right? Yeah, so... And wasn't it going to be just torn down? So the recap on that was the previous applicant that came through put um, the house in an advertisement, and it basically said, free, just move it yourself. 
there were no takers. Um, and if memory serves, the historical society here um, kind of came up with a plan for some of the foundation um, bricks, and the idea was they were going to take some of those field stones, use them around the property, uh, put a little plaque on one of them, kind of a memorial type of thing. And yeah. That was how they were going to best utilize it. But yes, it was pretty much scheduled to be torn down if that daycare facility had gone there. Yeah, correct. Okay. So, uh, we don't plan to do anything right now with that building. So, your plans include leaving it just as it is? It is right now. Okay. Any other questions on site inventory analysis aspect of this project? Oh, seeing none, I'll ask Jamal to prime us on the master plan phasing of this. All right, so uh, the second step tonight will be the review of the conceptual master plan. Um, so it's intended to generally lay out how the plan development will be developed, including the proposed use of various parts of the site, uh, the proposed road and pedestrian network, overall approach to stormwater management, uh, development areas, proposed open space and buffer areas, and the development standards that will apply to the overall development. The board shall approve the master plan only if it finds that it complies with the zoning standards, is consistent with the site inventory and analysis, and reflects a reasonable utilization of how the site of the site given both environmental and built environment conditions. So staff has reviewed the conceptual master plan and it appears that the proposed building does not meet the maximum front yard setback requirement of 25 feet from Saco Street. Uh, the applicant will need to make revisions to the plans to ensure it is zoning compliant before the board can take final action on the master, plays, fan fa master plan phase of the review process. That's all I have. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, uh, we had missed where the, the interpretation where it was the front the street that was closest to was the front. We had intended County Street to be the front yard. Um, it's just a matter of moving the building a little bit closer to County Street and a little bit further away from Saco to make County Street the closest and to use those setbacks within the thing. But the intent is to keep the building is in within that southwest corner of the site. And it allow for the rest of the site to go for future use for parking and other uses within the TDC. Site, we, uh, um, we also include a, you know, a little park, park, a mini park in this corner there around that tree. Uh, there was a type on the plant that said store and then stones. We are talking about whether the house was going to come down, we were going to some stones there or some other, maybe some granite benches or something to enhance that area and some other things plant uh, We haven't got a landscape architect to do that yet, but that would be part of the site plan review would be to develop a landscape design for that park. Okay. So that being said, uh, let's go with Jen on this. Um, yeah, so my first question you sort of just answered was just generally about kind of what the thought was for that pocket park in the corner. Um, and I understand that you more detail may be forthcoming, but I was just curious if you had intended that to be intended for there to be any sort of um, public access there. So whether it's not maybe not necessarily a sidewalk, but just something that sort of connects it in any way to the rest of the development on the site. Yeah, um, I think there's going to be some kind of <coughs> pathway that if you go there, we're uh, talking with staff about some sidewalks possibly on either in Saco or on County Road that would be part of the future development of that intersection and providing um, space for that easement and working with the town on that, increasing and enhancing that pedestrian access um, within that area. Okay. Um, and I see that you've called out um, an area in the or so south east corner for septic. Um, I was just curious if that was, are you intending that to be the only area on the site to treat for septic insulation or are you think, is that just specific to the, um, the current coffee shop? Um, I think for the coffee shop over towards the front of the site, we're gonna put its own small septic system. That was more of a concept for the rest of the development 
would be a future septic system, trying to keep the septic, stormwater, and well, well separated. Separate. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, Thank you. Rick Mikey? Um, no, I had the question about the septic as well. Uh, glad to see in, in the separation between the stormwater and septic. Um, I really don't have anything at this point. Um, as it progresses, I'm sure uh, we'll get into a little bit more. But uh, it seems like it's going down the right, right pathway. Roger. Yeah, I, um, I want to talk about the um, TVC zone. Yes. This is what that is. And as I recall, when the previous project was before us, one of the issues was um, making sure there was enough space, you know, along Saco Street for a sidewalk. And I think we're talking about 10 feet at that time. Now, now would that be 10 feet? Would that be within the buffer or 10 feet plus the buffer? Uh, I'd have to refer to our engineer about sidewalk design, but the buffer is intended to separate the development from the street. So it'd be probably go sidewalk buffer development. Okay. Yeah, we had coordinated um, to get along Saco, and I think it was, we had um, talked about easements, sidewalk easements, specifically along both frontage <laughs> yeah. uh, for Saco and County Road. And I believe they varied just because of the distance really from, um, the existing travel way just because realistically there's probably going to be some improvements to the roadway as well so not only I think sidewalk but maybe trying to push out the road a little bit to improve specifically that corner uh, where we're so close to the right of way um, and so sidewalk would have to be in an easement outside that but I don't recall the exact number if that's what you're saying but I remember them being two different numbers maybe a 10 and a 15 that's why but I can't remember which way yeah. it went well I, I think it's important to bring it up be, yeah. so they know I mean if right now if, if he's just thinking 25 feet mm -hmm. then that's not counting the sidewalk or the potential for a future sidewalk for the so buffer you mean right right yeah so do you understand that yeah, yeah. okay okay <laughs> I think, I think that's all I really have. I just want to make sure that that was clarified. Thank you. Rachel? Yeah, um, I guess future things to think about, and that is um, street trees. Yeah. Uh, and the, we have the septic is that might create a little problem. <coughs> Though it's hard to see if this is actually in a good scale, but... Uh, you're going to have to consider both the stormwater area and the septic in relationship to any landscaping that you're going to put along yep. there, any buffering. Uh, I notice also that there is a shed that's encroaching on the property. You've noted that. Um, you need to figure out how to regularize that, either grant an easement or have the shed moved, but your boundaries should be secure and determined and fixed. Um, Aroma Joe's is a franchise, correct? Correct. Is there a specific <coughs> architecture that's required? Um, they have a very colonial type of um, building with a, sort of a uh, clapper type siding. Uh, I may have Bob Mayer from Aroma Joe's. You can talk to that better. <coughs> Ron Meyer from Aroma Joe's and the development manager. I wanted to show you a picture, if I could, real quick, of the actual building itself. Okay. Yeah, could you show it to all? Absolutely. Yeah, everybody's right around. So uh, I'm going to give you. Yeah. I'll just yeah. I wish I had this for you on the screen. Yeah. Nice. I can show you the actual building. I see them, actually. I like them. <laughs> You're like, okay. <laughs> well, here we go. I've been in them several times. I was, in one, the I was in one yesterday. I was in one yesterday. It was very nice. Oops. So it's, it's all oh, vinyl crap. siding. She just <laughs> it got small and I tried to make it big again. Oh no, it disappeared. Might take me a minute. I erased it. <laughs> you made it and deleted all, all your content. Here we go. There's a drawing of the actual building there itself. All vinyl, so we have the clapboard siding as well as the shingle siding on the bottom. Um, all blue trim on the top, white for the actual clapboard siding, and then this um, shingle siding is a Harvard gray. All right, is there, um, 
it, the, the facility is going to have to meet the, count, the town's design standards sure. within some limitations of the franchisor's uh, requirements. The, um, I, as I'm looking at this Aroma Joe's on here, it looks as though there is a concrete pad. Do you expect to put anything on that? On the, right across from the uh, parking lot. Uh, isn't that a So it's actually going to be a deck that comes out. Uh, that's where the mechanicals are going to be stored on that back deck. But it's not going to be used for customers. Not used for customers. So just for mechanicals in the back entryway towards the employees to enter. Okay, so the, there will be no customers inside. No customers inside. Okay. Um, I guess that begs the question of the parking lot, but just for the uh, just for the staff, I assume. Uh, I've got some concerns about the. You're going to have to consider the signage on the parking lot because as people stop, get their coffee, and whip around trying to head on their way out and get to work, uh, they might run into some people trying to cross the parking lot. So you're going to have to be careful about that. You're going to have to have signs that say, you know, slow down. Um, yes, yes. Otherwise, you, you could run into some real problems there. Mm -hmm. And in addition, where would you propose a um, creating the intersection or the access to the future parking area from um, this access road. That would come off. That would come off the road somewhere in this area. Off into. I the I would suggest that you really consider that and basically show us that yeah. as you come back where that uh, connection would be. Yeah. Um, that's something we typically ask how it's going to be connected with other facil other other buildings uh, and parking areas on a on a lot. The, the driveway is intended as a prime entrance and as far away from the intersection to prevent any queuing um, impacts to the intersection. Right, but uh, so... So, so, it, so, it, the, so all, all the access is going to be from that one drive to the future parking. And that's where we would have to see how that access is going to, is going to be constructed. Right. right. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Right. Um, I like your architecture. Um, and I like Rum Joe's, and I like that I can walk to it. Um, I do have a procedural question for Jamal, maybe. I think um, as far as the site inventory, we're fine, and um, as far as the master plan, though, are we just looking at the master plan for Rum and Joe's tonight? And the, and the reason I ask that is because, um, you know, it, it shows, and I tried to figure it out from the book, which I've been studying on master plans. But um, it, it shows the future parking lot and the future buildings, and, and I'm not, you know, I think, I, I, are those including in the, and the reason I ask is because of setbacks and road frontage and stuff like that. Yeah, so the, um, the applicants showing those, I don't think they know the actual future of that no. development. Yeah, um, we're just showing that we can have space for this development allocated in sort of a bubble diagram where the development could occur. Okay. The master plan is really here for just the Aroma Joe's. So and that's what we're looking for. In relation to that, the Aroma Joe's building is considered the principal building where the setbacks will be measured from. Okay. So that's why we made that comment. Okay. Yep. Um, but the road front, everything else that is in TVC2 would have to be met based on... Mm -hmm. right. In okay. the future, yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, that, that's you know, that, but that's you know, that was just showing potential for that future development. The, right. What we're here for right now is it's just the Roma Joe's, just the one building, okay. under a thousand square feet. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah. Um, the last time we looked at this site, the sidewalks were important, so mm -hmm. the sidewalks would be great if we right. could get them to, you know, keep that town village thing. Feel yeah, we're trying to, you know, this thing. Like I said, we missed the, the frontage which was the front line section, yeah. section of the TBC2 zone. But the intent was to have leaving that front area along County Street available for both buffer right. and um, for that sidewalk, because we had met with staff and that was right. discussion. Yeah, that's we great. sort of relocate the building towards that sort of Okay. And then... Um, County Street, our frontage. Yeah, it's nice that you have... Uh, you know, you plan to, to leave the um, historic house because that's nice because there's only so many of them left in Scarborough. Um, 
thought I had one more question. Oh, I, just thinking back to the to the we the last applicant that looked at this, um, I think um, we talked about the street light. Um, mm -hmm. Just to be aware of that 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 intersection's pretty busy. You so aware of that. Um, <laughs> right now there's uh, there's two lights there, but there's no left hand turn out of light out of Saco Street, mm -hmm. and sometimes with oncoming traffic only like a couple of cars will make that turn. Right. So I imagine a lot of people are going to want to stop in and get your coffee. So it'd be nice if mm -hmm. you know, a few a few more could get through there. So. I'm sure when you're doing a full traffic movement permit for this to like site, thank you. Yeah. And making appropriate contributions to the uh, intersect improvements for the site. Anyway, yeah. Because I think uh, the town's already planning some improvements there. Yeah. Um, so you can <coughs> chime in. <laughs> yeah, we are um, looking at um, utilizing some of our in traffic impact fee monies out in that area of town, um, specifically because of the congestion, and, and that's a failing intersection. Um, and however, um, really, we'll be interested as staff to review whatever comes out of that traffic um, analysis that you guys come up with, um, just because of the sheer volume that you're going to be seeing, which is going to be very different than the daycare that we looked at previously. So it's going to be at kind of looking at, like you were saying, at that level, but um, it might be above and beyond, say, our typical um, yeah, improvements, maybe. That intersection, I know the last time we went through, we had um, worked through with the applicant about doing some turning lanes and some signal head and some traffic signal design a little bit of that work, um, which never actually obviously came together. So it'll be really important for us to to talk through that with staff right. and try to figure out where we're at. We are um, in the uh, beginning stages of preliminary design. I'll say, I think the surveyors are, were supposed to be out there today, but with the snow, I'm not quite sure if they were out there or not. But um, so it'd be, it would be really good to just kind of dovetail this into maybe what we're, we're working on. Exactly. I think that's yeah. yeah, so I think it's a great spot for the long goes and um, Good luck. Thank you, Rick. Um, I've got two quick questions. It seems like the board here has covered most of it. The, you have two existing frame barns identified um, along the, one of them seems to be almost right on top of where your asphalt road is. Uh, Those barns actually are, have been removed since the survey. And so the, they're not existing? They're, they're actually not there anymore. Okay. So um, uh, future so, versions of the plan will not have them on there. They've been all removed. The only thing that's going to remain is the, uh, the Thames house. That's the only structure left on the property, correct? So all of these others are quote unquote not existing frame barns. Okay. So are the foundation still there? Whatever it was, was it a concrete pad or? Um, no, there's nothing left. There's nothing left, it's just grass. I think it was point. just like barns sitting on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That was pretty much it. Um, well, I think you headed in the right direction. You've got some some marching orders, some things to clean up, and I look forward to the next submission. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> All right, next item of business, Maine Medical Center requests a site plan review for 80 Campus Drive, Assessor's Map R76, Lot 4A. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this project's located in the Business Office Research, or BOR, Zoning District at 80 Campus Drive. The applicant's proposing to construct a 108,000 square foot, three-story medical building on their existing campus, in addition to 500 new parking spaces, pedestrian infrastructure, and stormwater management facilities. Uh, so the applicant, as I just said, is proposing to construct an additional 500 parking spaces on the campus, is an exceeding and is exceeding the minimum requirements by just over 100 spaces. So given the amount of impervious surfaces proposed on the property, staff recommends that the applicant reduce the amount of new parking on the site. The applicant should uh, discuss this with the board this evening. The applicant's also proposing two new entrances to the campus along Campus Drive. Again, given the amount of impervious services proposed, uh, staff recommends that the applicant, applicant consider eliminating uh, the driveway located just to the west of the proposed 
uh, building as it appears it would still be accessible using the existing uh, driveway on the campus. Uh, staff also recommends the applicant attempt to mirror the existing pedestrian infrastructure on the campus within the proposed uh, large parking areas. This would provide a safer way for uh, pedestrians to travel throughout the site. Uh, given the proposed building and overall campus, um, there appears to be an opportunity to provide additional buffering provisions along the easterly portion of the site. So the applicant should discuss this with the board. And staff would like to point out that a full stormwater review has not been completed by the town's peer reviewers or staff uh, based on in missing information in the submission materials. Uh, this, this information will need to be provided uh, with future submissions. And the applicant should be sure to discuss the proposed building design um, and the renderings provided uh, with the board this evening. And I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Tim. Would you like to introduce yourself and the project, please? I will. I'm Steve Kasabian. I'm the Chief Administrative Officer for May Medical Partners and Vice President of the Medical Practices for May Medical Center. May Medical Partners is the wholly owned medical group for May Medical Center. Thanks very much for letting us uh, spend some time here this evening describing our plans related to the proposed medical office building on our Scarborough campus. Um, we're very excited about this project. We've been working on it for a very long time. We're excited about the plan, the services that will be delivered to patients on this location, both locally, regionally, and actually throughout the state of Maine. Um, and certainly excited to continue an important enhance a continued report important relationship with the town of Scarborough uh, through the development of this project. Tonight we'll spend some time talking about the needs, a short period of time talking about needs for the project, building information and elevations, campus context, access, circulation, landscape plans, and stormwater and traffic and parking. So, in terms of needs, the, the project will include three major components uh, in that roughly 90 or so thousand square feet or 108,000 with the basement area. Uh, neurosciences, for those who aren't familiar with the term, includes neurosurgery, pain management, neurology, uh, and related programs to uh, spine uh, surgery, those sorts of things. So it's a big program for us. Vascular surgery and then otolaryngology, which is commonly referred to as the ear, nose, and throat specialties. These are all spread out today across five locations in Scarborough, South Portland, and Portland offices, just based on the way those programs came together and through the acquisition of various medical groups over a long period of time. So we coordinate care for our patients across a lot of geography just for these three clinical services. This new building gives us the opportunity to bring those specialties together have one point of access for our patients so they aren't wayfinding to different offices depending on the subspecialty needs they have. And certainly creates a convenience for patients that are coming from great distances who often struggle to find us in those locations and park at those locations as well. Um, the overall objective is really straightforward here is to create a much improved patient experience and create an opportunity for our physicians and providers to be able to work together in a single facility, which is very important to those specialists. Good evening, I'm uh, Robert Corson from uh, SMRT Architects and Engineers. So I'm going to kind of go over uh, kind of the site uh, plan, kind of site layout and kind of organizational strategies. We're going to go over the building, kind of building elevations and kind of some of the key features of, of that. And then uh, we're going to discuss things like the um, traffic and parking and some of the other items as a, uh, as the end of our discussion. Uh, just in general, to, to organize everybody, to kind of orient everyone, we have uh, U.S. Route 1 uh, along this side right here. You have Campus Drive, which is right here. This is 100 Campus, which is a, a previously converted uh, retail to um, medical office. You have an existing medical office building right here. There are currently access points here, here, and actually one a little further down onto the campus. So this is actually a campus 
layout. Uh, with the, that intent is uh, multi-buildings uh, organized to create um, ease of access to each of those points. Uh, as far as the access points right now, we have the current access which goes up to 96. So just kind of a, a one or anything too is, is that from a site standpoint, uh, it's a fairly uh, sloped site. This being the highest point, which is the first floor elevation of the 96 campus drive, and this being kind of a lower level orientation. So uh, this being the new proposed building would have access basically at the same elevation height as the existing 96, and then the bottom side of that, which is about 14 feet lower, would be a lower level ground level access. So there's a fair amount of contour in the site, so just everybody recognize that. So this basically rises up, that's the main entrance point. Currently the entry uh, to 96 parking area is right about here. We're moving that entry up to kind of a line and create kind of our vehicular spine right here for access both to 96 and then access to our building, which is, has the drop off uh, portion right here. Uh, with that, we also have created kind of the uh, cross axis spine right here, which would access both the rear lot, uh, basically three quadrants of parking with primarily staff and then parking for patients with close proximity to both a pedestrian spine. So uh, along this avenue, this spine here, is a pedestrian access point with the uh, collector being kind of at the uh, end point here. That's a collector for both this parking lot right here and then this parking lot at that point. And then collects it down to this point uh, and distributes it both uh, in a northerly direction or back down to 96. Some of the comments that we're on were had to do with uh, some of the traffic calming items and yes, we will be we're uh, doing some additional work on uh, what those comp traffic calming pieces would be. One is actually at the pedestrian crossing here. Uh, it's looking at a table or some uh, calming item here, uh, as well as um, we're using some of the other uh, current scenarios with it. We don't have long kind of straightaways, things like that. Use the curve to, to be able to, to do some calming as well. Um, we, uh, the, the comment about the Access Drive uh, right here, which is to the west of that, which is one of the uh, secondary access points to the site, which we as a team really believe that was a very important part of the site development uh, for a number of reasons. One is, is that to create kind of clear circulation. One of the issues you have a lot of times is that uh, with people searching for and trying to get from point A to point B, um, you can actually create a lot of internal circulation. So what we're trying to do is minimize the amount of kind of uh, vehicular and pedestrian crossing. So we, instead of having people double back and recross their steps, we're giving an opportunity for there to be a relief. Uh, we also believe that there's a, a, a safety factor, which is the idea that by allowing the campus to have, uh, or that this portion of the campus to have two access points, that in case of any sort of emergency or scenario that happened along uh, the existing drive located here, uh, we actually have an, a relief point. Uh, the other part of this really ultimately is a wayfinding. So the idea of uh, those who uh, have difficulty wayfinding to multiple buildings, 94, 96, whatever the, the address would be, is by defining one of these for the 96 and then the other for 94 gives an opportunity for wayfinding. So those are some of the uh, things we're using to organize the site. The, the lower lot, uh, again, uh, this is the existing um, ambulatory surgical center uh, that has its parking lot here and is actually parking in the rear. Uh, so we're extending parking along this side to both provide parking, uh, some balance of parking for the surgical center as well as providing for lower access parking both for uh, staff and uh, for access to the lower ground level. Um, so the outline, uh, this kind of
kind of dotted outline that's here kind of is to illustrate the uh, current amount of impervious surface that's, that's currently on the site. So you can see the delta between what's, uh, what's proposed versus what's existing. That's the other, obviously, access point up there. One of the other comments was uh, uh, some, obviously, screening. We're, again, looking at uh, some additional screening and, and what that, what's the appropriate screening for that to both balance against snow removal as well as the elevation difference between that and the neighboring uh, neighbors on the opposite side. There's about a, about a nine foot elevation difference between the back of the parking lot and the the edge. So it's just understanding that in a little bit more detail uh, in regards to that. Um, the other part was uh, there was a comment about bringing access between uh, these two lots right here. Uh, again, grade does not really allow that to, to happen uh, without really doing a, a, a cross back. Give you an idea is that's these are on here are two foot contours. So this actually slopes down to this point right here. And then it slopes from this location all the way down to the existing lot. So there's a, a fair amount of contour that happens along there. From a stormwater standpoint, we have an existing uh, area which really services the 96 uh, campus drive. So that, that actually uh, a portion of our redeveloped area will actually go into that existing stormwater. Uh, we have a um, collection and treatment area at this point right here, which will actually take a portion of this, uh, portion of these three lots to that point right there. And then the other lot would have uh, subsurface uh, uh, treatment and containment below the parking lot at this point uh, for, their, for our stormwater. Building. Uh, so the building, is the this is the uh, easterly elevation, kind of the front entry point, uh, entry canopy here. We have <clears throat> basically a three-story section here, 42 feet to the roof line, 46 feet to the parapet. Uh, there's a parapet around uh, most of the building. Uh, the this uh, westerly elevation shows you the difference between grade, which is, uh, this is the three stories uh, above the grade on the opposite side with a story below uh, the grade on the back side. The basically of uh, drop off canopy, the material is pretty much in keeping with what else is on the campus, which is a uh, basic brick and panel uh, from much of the campus, so we're repeating a lot of the same motifs. Uh, using patterning uh, as far as the window treatments, uh, the panels that'll be for the stair towers, and the entry uh, entry point will be made of a cementitious uh, panel that will be on the on the both the front sides and uh, kind of contrasting. There are also a couple of uh, points in which we have to begin to give relief to the surface. Again, a paneled area to both. Um, break up the surface on, on each of those sides. This would be the easterly side, westerly side here. So the easterly side, this is the canopy, and it gives give you an idea about the grade across that site. Uh, from here to the drive location at the surgical center. Uh, a couple of uh, images of existing, this is 100 campus. Uh, right here is the uh, 96 campus, the research center, and then the surgery center. And the, the uh, again, brick, uh, larger window openings at the main entry points. Uh, again, we have both uh, the um, brick and things like that framing. What we have panel conditions. So there's kind of a, a, a similar vocabulary that we're trying to use throughout the campus. campus. Some of the uh, um, renderings that we did early on, again, we're uh, looking at both capturing not only the, uh, the, the, the building itself, but some of the landscape features, 
with the idea of uh, some of the areas that we would actually be creating contour or berms uh, towards this is actually the uh, entry canopy here. And this is the drive that runs around and the drop off and pick up. And then this would be the uh, other vehicular cross, cross street. Um, Again, one of the th comments was obviously I had obviously markings and directional signs for the one way for the drop off and pick up, and yes, that would be uh, something that we're working on to further define what those are and to uh, look at what other features we might put on there to uh, have visual indicators for folks of uh, um, how they actually enter into that that zone. Uh, this would be a shot from the easterly side again from the primary. A patient parking area. Uh, right here, there were some comments about you know, the same same notion is, is that uh, these are areas we do see opportunities for seating and for uh, garden space, things like that. The intent is on the on this side of the canopy would be a small garden space. Uh, so those who are either waiting for pickup or just wanted to be able to get outside uh, for a little bit, have an opportunity at that point uh, to be able to do that. There's also a few other areas that we're looking at uh, across the, the campus to begin to create uh, small spots both for staff and for patients to be able to get outside and, and to have a, an opportunity to enjoy the, the outdoors. Uh, this is a shot really uh, from the westerly side kind of coming across uh, the uh, other westerly entrance drive, uh, pedestrian access for both staff and for, uh, if there were patients that needed to go from one facility to another facility. Uh, we don't necessarily see that as uh, a, a big, um, big driver, but you know, keeping the pedestrian access across the, the campus is a big one. This also connects up to our pedestrian uh, pathway that connects the uh, ambulatory surgery and actually all the way down to research uh, kind of across the campus. Uh, from a landscape standpoint, again, using a variety of uh, both scale of trees, both uh, um, larger scale street trees as well as uh, smaller scale trees uh, in the pedestrian areas to try to uh, have a variety of um, uh, scales that happen based upon uh, the location. That's also something that uh, Lighting, um, we're doing the same, something similar, but lighting is a, again, scale of the fixtures that are actually in the parking areas being uh, one scale, pedestrian uh, scale being a uh, slightly different scale. This is an aerial, aerial view, really looking back again, trying to, it, it, illustrating, we have the 100 campus, we have 96 campus, you have the, um, surgical center here and research center here in the new facility at that point. Uh, the main drive, uh, there was one comment about some screening on this side right here. The landscape, uh, one of the things we did look at that it is there is a, one of the major um, kind of power access points is lying there. It's actually above ground uh, poles. So one of the things we obviously try to do is to not uh, have a conflict between trees and power lines. Uh, so we'd have to look at something as a different scale as far as uh, plantings along that edge. Turn it over to Al. Hi, my name is Al Green. I'm Director of Planning for Maine Health. I'll talk to you tonight about traffic, parking, and I'll reiterate some of the points Rob made about circulation, so thanks for having us. First, I want to start with a quick summary of the traffic evaluation that was done by Goral Palmer. And the first step in this traffic evaluation was looking back at the, at that point, the <coughs> DEP site location of development permit, which precedes the main DOT TMP permit, which you probably all know, which I learned recently. Anyways, that permit was granted in 1999 for an additional development of 388,000 square feet on the campus. As you see on the screen there, with this project, we'll be at 342,000 square feet since that permit was, was, uh, was granted. So we're still within that 1999 permitted amount. And I bring that up because of uh, 
when that permit was granted, it, the, the other, the, the design of the Hillcrest and Route 1 intersection was designed to allow for that volume of traffic. So we're still within that amount of, of square footage and, and trip amount, which speaks to the first item in that box on the bottom that says we're within the uh, original peak trip counts in the AM and peak hours, so we're, we're good there. The second box relates back to the permit. So when the permit was granted, one of the recommendations was that once we get to 75% of that 388,000 square foot number, we evaluate whether or not a signal is warranted at the north entrance. And I'll point that out on, my, on one of my following slides. But we did that work, we found that the signal wasn't warranted, so yeah, that box was checked. And finally, the um, question of the traffic impact fee, we calculated that, you have that on the screen, and that's coming your way. <coughs> Next is parking. So Steve mentioned one of the primary reasons for this project is to improve the patient experience. And as we all know, as patients or potential patients, uh, parking is essential to that. So what I mean by uh, convenient parking, I'm talking about both proximity to the front door and availability. So proximity is fairly straightforward. Availability is, is something else um, entirely, right? So it's, as a lot is used, as there are more cars in that lot, and, and uh, what our experts at Girl Palmer have taught us is that once utilization gets to 85% or higher, availability goes drastically down. People have to hunt for a parking spot. The experience goes down in this. So the proposed project is in line with some of the best practices for healthcare programs. So this is an outpatient uh, healthcare clinic. There's a lot of throughput at this site. Um, so, uh, physician visits may be 15 minutes, they may be 60 minutes. So as you might expect, there's quite a lot of turnover in the site on any given day. And what you see there is, um, so one of the best practices is that the peak parking demand is roughly 4.9 vehicles per thousand square feet. Now that's demand, that's not necessarily supply. So I mentioned the 85% utilization rate earlier because as you think about 4.9 vehicles per thousand square feet as the demand, then your supply should be closer to 6.2 two spaces per thousand square feet. So what we're proposing, as I said before, I think is within the best practices of, for healthcare programs. <coughs> so Rob previously mentioned the size of the existing parking on the site, and that's what you see here. So it was outlined in, in the red dotted box before. This is what it looks like, and I borrowed this from, from Google. Um, this is 96 Campus Drive, down in the bottom right hand of your screen. I lost my cursor here. And then 84 Campus Drive here. <clears throat> so again, the proposed parking as you see again on the screen, is typically higher at a medical office building than at other building uses. So we feel that going above and beyond the four per thousand square feet that the town of Scarborough requires is, is justified in this case. So important to us uh, at May Medical Center, May Medical Partners, is communication. So we spend a lot of time talking both inside of our organization with employees and providers and outside of the organization, keeping folks informed as to what it is we're doing on these large projects. So this is just a screenshot that reminds us all that on our website, the May Medical Center website, we're tracking the modernization project, the big Bromhall project that you've all uh, seen going on over the past year or more and would include in this website uh, the modernization or the development of this um, medical office building on the Scarborough campus. So this is one way that we reach out to both the community and to our um, employees as well as keeping them informed um, and would encourage any and all interested folks to, to visit that page. In terms of timeline, so we're there where the red arrow is uh, represents today. Um, I'd hope for something less than a, a white visit to you, but that's what we got. 
Um, this is a long process. We anticipate uh, uh, quite a bit of collaboration and dialogue um, with this group to get to a finish line in terms of an approval. Understanding, of course, as you well know, we are tracking with a DEP uh, process as well, and we need that approval, um, of course, to obtain approval from you guys for, for this project. But we think that brings us to roughly the beginning of September uh, and would anticipate with approval uh, beginning construction in October or November uh, and um, also anticipate finishing a project like this uh, very late in 2020, perhaps early 2021, general time frame for something of this scale. Uh, we do have the opportunity for public comment on this item. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak on this project? Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Um, Roger, do you want to start on this? Sure. Um, I, I think the um, I think it looks terrific, and I think the whole campus is is uh, really a great asset to the community and. Uh, so the big, I guess the issue is the parking. Uh, and I, I have a question regarding when you do a campus like this, when I was looking at this, um, this aerial view that you had, and the thing that's very noticeable to me is all the surface parking. And I'm just kind of curious, at what point do you ever consider a parking garage? Does, does that ever enter into the discussions it, it does um, <clears throat> I'll say that uh, as you might expect the cost per parking space for a garage is much higher than it is for a surface parking space uh, which is one of the drivers away from the parking garage at this point uh, that and we don't feel that given the existing buildings at this time a parking garage is the highest and best use okay because um, some of these areas are quite a, quite a bit of a walk to get to, to, to the buildings. Um, so, <clears throat> do, you, do you anticipate, and I don't know whether this is for a discussion here, but do you anticipate additional buildings on this site? I notice you, you folks uh, control the old ball, ball um so that's a potential site in the future as well? It is. Yeah. And I know there's tremendous slopes because of the um, manufactured, you know, the, the, the homes in the back there, there's quite a, quite a slope there. So um, I'm, in, in terms of the, the, you know, the question about the number of parking spaces, I'm inclined to side with, with you know, their position on this because I think they, have a better understanding of what their needs are probably, you, you know, even though we have our standards. Um, I think they've done a pretty good job so far. And to, this, like I said, it's a great asset to the community. And so I don't have any other questions at this point. Thanks, Roger. I, other than I think the building looks terrific, especially when you look at it from this aerial view here. <coughs> I'm going to just piggyback real quick on some of Roger's thoughts. You know, I think it's rare to find an applicant that comes to us and says, we want to spend more money on parking lots. Um, it's not cheap. It, you know, it obviously impacts stormwater and, and things of that in the purpose surface area. Um, so I, as a default setting, typically will, will say, you know, the applicant probably understands their needs better than us. And I mean, we have thresholds, right, um, as a town. Th these are your minimums. Um, that being said, um, I, I do have to ask, had you considered maybe delineating some of this parking as maybe to be built in the future, which is based on what you see as actual use, and then deciding whether or not it's worth further investment to pave the remaining area? Basically, is there a way to reduce how much asphalt you've got here, still leaving you guys the option to look at what your real needs are five years down the road and say, okay, We've already been through the approval process. We can now pave this because I think it's time. 
you know, just a thought. Um, and then also on on the other side of that is I, I did notice some of this, you know, uh, ADA parking in the uh, best explain this. Um, hold up my map. Is the rest of this. this section here, it's in the new area, and it just seems so far away from everything. And it, it appears to me like that type of parking might be better suited to maybe this back end over here where it looks like access to that building might be a shorter walk, especially when you talk about ADA parking. So just a thought there as well um, as to maybe if you had any specific reason why that ADA parking ended up in that parking field where it was. But, um, you know, I, I'll echo Roger's concerns on the back corners of these parking lots, and I see you have it outlined for staff, but that is a considerable walk. So. Um, you know, making sure that those people can get through your parking lot safely is another, another concern. It's another factor, you know, making sure that they, they can navigate their way to the building without impeding traffic too much or at least being seen well. Um, so I would take that into consideration. Outside of that, I would say that, you know, the building, the campus, you know, great, you know, great contributor to this community. So I have no other issues outside of, you know, those couple of footnotes. Um, that and of course, you know, the town is waiting for a couple other submissions so they can complete the review of this. But um, that's my piece for right now. Rachel, do you want to chime in? Sure. Um, I have a couple of questions and a couple of observations. I notice the the ground level. Is that going to be a staff entrance or is that going to be patient as well as staff? It will be uh, primarily staff staff and supply and just so that we're talking about the same entrance pull it up on the screen here so that is the cursor this is the entrance you're referring yeah. to correct yeah yes. okay it, what's the which, uh, which, option uh, sorry to interrupt which mm -hmm. by the way addresses the your question about ADA parking mm -hmm. so this being a staff entrance um, you know we thought that putting ADA spaces back here is Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering about directing people kind of away from that area to begin with, simply because if it's going to be primarily staff, it's going to be filled early and stay filled, and people would be frustrated if they see that entrance and all of a sudden find themselves cruising around uselessly and then trying to find another way to get up above. So you might want to consider how that's handled, and um, also whether you actually need at least one of those aisles at this point. The aisle, the parking aisle, furthest away from that ground level. I don't know how many staff you're planning on, on having there uh, in the building, but that's an awful lot of parking if it's gonna be primarily staff. You could also consider having that as the parking for the staff for the already existing building. And you've got walkways going up, and I, I understand it's a, a steep slope, uh, but that would also free up a lot more space in the upper level parking areas. One of the things that we typically look at or look for, uh, especially when you get into multiple, multiple buildings, is some sort of a placemaking. In other words, you, you've talked about um, the trails, you've talked about some benches, but where do the staff go? I, I know there's a cafeteria in 100 Campus Drive. Uh, I don't know if staff typically walk there, um, but it would be good to have that sort of a connection and to really consider the connection of the buildings on the campus. I think, for instance, folks that go to surgery, to the surgery building, uh, I know when my husband was in for minor procedure, I wandered outside and tried to find some place to walk while I was waiting for him to wake up. Um, <clears throat> that a good trail system with places to sit down, uh, places for staff to gather in good weather to bring their lunches out there, that really creates a sense of community. And uh, so much of what you've talked about in your presentation really is talking about developing a community. You have a, a 
sort of a college campus and, and think about it that way and think about where, where people gather, where people spend some time and how welcoming that can be. So I would urge you to consider the, the walkable connections with all of the buildings as staff move back and forth, as people from one building might want to go over to another building, uh, if there's a second cafeteria uh, that people can gather in. Those sorts of spaces are very appreciated by especially the families that it may be there waiting for a loved one uh, in a longer, uh, more extended visit. Um, I think I, I like the building. Uh, I look at the ground level, and I, I understand that's mostly going to be staff entrance and uh, storage or store rooms. Uh, I wonder that there's no windows uh, on the sides that, uh, on the ground level right here. Uh, so consider that. That's a pretty extended blank area. And as people look at that side of the building, uh, either consider the sort of landscaping that is going to soften that blank area or consider, consider some windows there. I look forward to the rest, uh, to the conversations we're going to have between now and the time you get your official approval, and I think you've made uh, a really good start, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple of quick questions. Well, one thing, I, I think that it would be great to have paths, like Rachel said, around this particular, um, you know, I'm not, I don't really harp on those too much myself because of the development areas, but I think for this particular site and this particular application, it would be great to have, you know, some walking paths. Because, you know, you got people in the hospital and you're worried about them, it's nice to go for a walk. Um, and then the other thing, you did a good job talking about parking, and I appreciate that. Um, but on the back of tab, Seven. There's. Um, it shows the last page shows paper parking. Is that? Did I miss the? I looked for the um, verbiage on that, but I think the only thing I could find is it says. Well, can you tell me what that says? Exhibit, exhibit two. There's a place for paper parking. Um, so. Am I confused? Though? Is that is that real parking? What is that? It's <clears throat> good. Good question. We call it paper parking, so it's it's real parking in the plan. So it's it's similar to what uh, Nick was suggesting as a phased approach to parking. Okay. Although this parking in particular has a little bit of history. So when the surgery center was proposed in the site plan review in 2005, the town of Scarborough held project to a higher parking requirement than the four per thousand. I think at that time it was it was 5.5 spaces per thousand. Uh, so at that point, May Medical Center and um, uh, the, the team proposing the project at that time said that given the program inside that building, which is really outpatient surgery, it's very different than an outpatient office. So the utilization at a surgery center like that is much smaller than it is at an outpatient office like we're proposing. So um, as a compromise, we demonstrated that if additional parking was needed, we could build it and that's where it would go, but that we, don't, we didn't think we did need it. And as a result, over the last several years since the surgery center has opened in 2007, we haven't needed it. So in this, with this project, we propose eliminating that paper parking and actually some of the proposed parking that you've seen tonight is in the same location. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Well, it is nice that you're very, you know, as concerned as you are with the patient experience. Uh, you know, I appreciate that. Um, because, you know, if I'm going out to eat at a restaurant and the parking lot's full, I'm leaving, but if I'm going for surgery, I'm thinking I gotta spend some time and find a parking space. <laughs> So it's nice that you're concerned with folks 
Um, it's nice that you can start. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm not doing the driveway when I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Um, Jen. Okay, um, staying on the parking topic, unless I've missed it, so you, you, in your presentation explained, which I thought was helpful, the difference between your um, sort of supply and demand in terms of parking and how important that parking utilization rate is. But I'm just curious <coughs> what you're seeing for parking utilization rates today, both in the immediate buildings adjacent to this, so at your 96 campus and the 84 campus, but then also at 100 um, campus drive. So are those at, are you, do you think that those are already at the 85% capacity, which is in your opinion effectively full if I'm understanding you right? Um, and do you expect that uh, that, that would apply it? these new lots as well? I don't know if you, if you may not know that off the top of your head, which is fine. Fortunately, I do. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah as, as part of the planning for this, this, uh, this project, parking was a big topic of conversation. So we wanted to know the answer to that very question. And what we found was that the existing parking is hovering right around the 85% utilization mm -hmm. rate. So you know, as, as we explained before, it's effective. Um, and then in particular, I'm curious about the small law area that is just south or uphill, let's say, of 96 Campus Drive. So this would be basically adjacent to the drop-off area for the building that currently exists there. Is that, I mean, that must be full all the time. Is this the lot you're talking about? Um, nope. Uh, wait. There's my question. Up, up above that, yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah, so um, as Rob explained before, there's a bit of a grade change between uh, this this lot and the lot you're asking about. Right. Um, so this lot currently services the basement programs or the ground floor programs in, the 80, in 96 campus. This parking lot and this parking lot all serve levels one through four, three. So yes, they're they're all currently occupied. Okay, which leads me to my next question, and I will spare you my own medical um, history. But having been a patient at your neuro uh, facility elsewhere in Scarborough, I fully personally appreciate the the point that you raised about parking availability near the door, um, and what that can mean in terms of patient experience for someone for whom that distance is very difficult. And so um, that half of me combined with the engineer half of me, um, the, the entrance, the drop off area that you propose in front of this building, just my very first impression of it was that it was a lot of impervious area with very little parking availability right where you would want it. Um, and that you certainly have, you know, at, at the end of the day, pr providing a lot of parking, but not, um, you know, not where I think that if I was visiting this site where I would, where I would either want that parking or where I would look for it first. And so I thought it was interesting that you talked about wanting to try and eliminate or reduce recirculation um, interior to the site for people that are searching for parking because that's where I would go first would be the front door. And what I would find would be two handicapped spots and then um, you know, a handful of angled spaces that are probably also gonna be full. And so that was my question about, why, about whether or not this other um, lot next door was frequently full, because that might be my next, my next thought, thinking that if I could find a spot there, it would be a shorter walk to the front door. Um, and then I think as a last result, I would sort of go up into this back parking field that, that you're proposing. So, um, I, you know, I don't know if there's a, a more efficient way to facilitate the drop-off area that, that might even loop the two current drop-off areas together to be able to provide some parking interior to that. Maybe you've already looked at that and it doesn't work. But that was just sort of my thought um, looking at this quickly at, at 
at the outset. Um, and you know, you can designate patient parking and staff parking, but I, but I do think ultimately people, especially patients, are just going to want to come and park as close as they can to the door, um, especially if they're not, um, <laughs> you know, getting around is difficult for them, and that may not always come with a handicap sticker that would entitle them to some of that right up front parking. Um, the comment about the um, sort of the middle driveway, if we will, the, the long winding one, um, I wonder if there's an opportunity to maybe combine access from that to the lower lot um, that might result in just one access point onto campus drive but would sort of facilitate better circulation you know, on your site. Um, for example, preventing someone from having to, you know, pull back out onto Campus Drive and then re-enter that lower parking lot um, if there was just sort of an interior connection aisle, then that might make that easier, but then would also eliminate um, a curb cut onto Campus Drive without eliminating access from a point that my guess is is probably important to you in terms of visibility and, and wayfinding, as you mentioned. Um, I don't, I'm looking at the site plan, so I don't recall offhand what the grading, there, you might have grading challenges in between there, but um, just another, another thought. Um, and then I think my last question is about transit and whether or not you've thought about any transit access um, to this building in particular or this part of the site and maybe if you could speak to, I think that you do have transit access through here now, um, whether or not that, you, you, whether you've talked at all with um, the transit agencies about how that's working, are you looking to add any other stops or shelters or anything like that? Uh, yes, we are. <clears throat> So as part of Maine Medical Center's transportation management program, we've been talking a lot with Portland Metro and other regional transit providers. Uh, Metro is actually looking into whether extending a route, I don't know which route at this point, out to the Scarborough campus makes sense. We're providing them with some volume numbers of what we think utilization might be. Mm -hmm. uh, that conversation is ongoing. I think it would be a really good idea, especially in terms of if you're recognizing um, that parking is, you know, coming at a premium and and heavily utilized. That's the first thing that I thought of was, well, how can you just get less people to park there? And that's not getting nobody to park there, but you know, encouraging, perhaps starting with your employees or some sort of incentive for um, patients to arrive there by bus. Yeah. Especially if you already have a route that runs through there, is sort of an advantage. Yeah. Yeah, it's certainly in line with our goal to reduce single. Thank you. Rick? Not much more to add from what everybody said, but there's lots of opportunity here for a few charging stations. Um, and I think for the staff area, we could definitely uh, find some spots there. And you've got some uh, medians here that probably would be conducive to uh, laying a couple of pipes and putting <coughs> some level two chargers in. Uh, certainly some of the doctors I know would probably be EV uh, owners, uh, although the price of EVs are coming down, so it's going to be <coughs> soon everybody uh, will have the potential to, to drive them. And I think uh, we need to make sure we, we provide an infrastructure for, for this market to start blossoming. That's all. Thank you. All right. Um, one last thing before we let you go. Um, <coughs> it was peer review. Might have caught some of your was it peer review? Traffic peer review. <coughs> it was traffic peer review on the uh, traffic counts you had. You know, they, and I think you acknowledged it too. They're about 20 years old. Um, so <coughs> I think it, it's worthwhile to have that, that run again, updated. Um, I don't know if there's anyone on the board or staff that might disagree with that thought, but 
I know. definitely think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> we've changed a lot in 20 years here. Um, and I know you had a lot of capacity, but I think it's worthwhile to, to run those counts. And that, can can yeah. I also just piggyback a little bit on um, what Jen was saying, too, about it sounds like you have the information um, that she was commenting on about the like a utilization analysis you've done on the existing campus. If you could provide that to staff with the next submission, I think that would be extremely helpful that we could look at that. <laughs> With that, do you have any uh, further questions for the board before you head off with your homework? <coughs> oh, I think we're good. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a well put together <coughs> project. I appreciate the thorough you. detail and presentations. Thank you. <coughs> Just made it. So we're going to take a seven minute break. Had him though. A little specific. We just need to make a quick seven. Actually, all we need is seven minutes. So quick seven minutes. All right. Next item and final item of the business side of our agenda. Petco Construction, Inc. requests a site plan review for 238 Gorham Road, Assessor's Map R38, Lot 27. Well, thank you. <coughs> Here. So this project is located in the B2 zoning district at 238 Gorham Road, uh, across the street from the Meineke Car Service building. The applicant was last before the board in February, as you may recall, for a sketch plan review. And the applicants here tonight proposing to construct an 8,000 square foot Napa Auto Parts building that will include retail sales and warehousing. So as requested by the board during <coughs> sketch plan review, uh, the applicant has eliminated a curb cut and is proposing one full access driveway along Gorham Road. Uh, given that the proposed driveway does not meet the separation standards, staff recommends that the applicant relocate the driveway directly across from the existing uh, entrance to Meineke. This could provide safer turning movements along this section of Gorham Road when we meet the site plan standards. Uh, the board should be sure to provide feedback on this element tonight. Uh, the town's traffic consultant uh, did note that a left turn lane may be required uh, for the development along Gorham Road. So the applicant should provide additional information about this potential off-site improvement uh, with future submissions. Given that the applicant has indicated they are expecting semi-trailer deliveries on the site, staff recommends the applicant uh, consider providing a connection to the abutting Shaw's parking area to the north. Uh, this connection could reduce the turning movements onto Gorham Road, provide for an easier turning movements uh, for these uh, <coughs> delivery trucks. The zoning ordinance does require a 15-foot landscape buffer <coughs> along the Gorham Road frontage uh, to help separate the development from the street. Uh, staff would like to point out that <coughs> storage is not allowed to be located within the buffer. And additionally, it appears that less than half of the buffer strip has the ability to be planted on due to the proposed stormwater facilities. So the board should be sure to provide direction to the applicant and staff on whether the proposed buffer meets the intent of the zoning ordinance. And the applicant should also uh, be prepared to discuss the building design with the board um, to ensure that it meets the design standards for a commercial district. And I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jim. Please. So, thank you for hearing us so late. I'll try not to be too long. I know there's an NCAA game on tonight, so I, everyone's got to get back to that. Um, since the February planning board meeting, there hasn't been a whole lot that has changed. The building location has generally remained consistent. We did change the parking layout a little bit to better conform to the site. The site layout we had at the sketch plan meeting really um, didn't promote traffic movement through the site like we like. There were some parking spaces that were, that were a little too close to the site entry. We also realigned some of the walkways and the handicap parking just to get the handicap parking at the entry where the client wants people to mainly access from. Again, the site does involve redevelopment of an antiquated site. The site is, if you've seen it, it's, it um, can, has a building which has been there for a long time now that has operated as a restaurant. That restaurant, Nara Sushi, is now closed with, uh, with this project going forward. And the site also has a single family dwelling. 
The single family dwelling causes the site not to be in conformance <coughs> with the land use standards or the zoning ordinance, I mean, because this particular <coughs> B2 zone doesn't allow for the single family. So the redevelopment of the site will bring it all into conformance. At the February planning board, we, we talked a lot about the site entry, and I know that that was brought up in the, the comments that we received. And really what we're proposing here is reutilizing that existing entry to the site. The site, if you, if you look at it, it's, it's triangular in nature. So across from Monique to the far right of the plan, it, it enters the site at a really a, a, a pinch point. And with tractor trailer deliveries, it's really hard to maneuver a tractor into the site and then be able to back up to where the loading is going to go on if you're looking at the plan to the left. So that seems to be a, a, a sticking point that we'd like to address tonight. I know at the sketch plan, we asked the plan board if they agreed with it at the location as shown here, and I, I believe everyone said yes. Uh, with that said, I'd, we have some comments that I don't know if you want to go through one by one or just hit on some of the major <coughs> points, but I do have a drawing that shows one of the traffic peer review comments was to requesting that we show how a tractor trailer may move into the site if it was across from Monica and I'll go ahead and flip this plan around. Do you think that would be helpful? You can see looking at that plan that the tractor trailer would have to, to be able to get to that loading area to the right, the tractor trailer would actually have to pull into where the soil filter is now and, and back up. And then exiting the site is just extremely difficult. Uh, so you can see how much of that site is, is used to be able to make that motion. It just, it, it re it's really not conducive to the, the shape of the parcel. There were a couple other points that Jamal brought up in the introduction, which includes the soil filter, how a portion of it is in the landscape buffer. And I'm going to leave it up to the board to kind of guide us on what, how they would interpret that because behind the stormwater underdrained soil filter, there's really nothing to buffer front to. So there's, it's just vegetation behind it. So there's really no major buffering of site elements there. And the soil filter will be grassed. Uh, it does encroach six feet into that buffer. So there's nine feet of that buffer that can be planted. So what we tried to do with the buffering, the landscape buffering in that area, is just to really give it a little bit more of a, uh, some vegetation that would provide screening. And then coming from the Shaw's side of the site to access the site for track and trailer, trailer deliveries, Shaw's is a corporation. And in my experience, it takes a long time to try to get a corporation <coughs> to agree to something of that nature, to try to, to, try to go through the Shaw's site to get access to here. There's a small parking area there too, and it would involve the tractor trailer coming around through the small parking area and then making a hard right into the site where there's some grade change there. So it is certainly a challenge from trying to get a tractor trailer to make that movement and also dealing with a corporation such as Shaw's. We do have scheduled that Right now, a traffic count on April 27th to evaluate the left-hand turn analysis. I did talk to our traffic engineers, and they, they from just a first look at it, they don't think it's going to be required, but they did mention that there is enough pavement there in the current road that if a left-hand turn is required, there's at least that amount of pavement there that would accommodate the left-hand turn. So if a left-hand turn is required, there are no major changes along Gorman Road that would be required. As far as with the sidewalk that was required for some, um, some money for the, to, that could go toward a sidewalk, the site plan review ordinance directed us to a 2005 townwide transportation study. And in that townwide transportation study, it said that a sidewalk, this area of Gorm Road, was not identified as having a sidewalk. So again, I'll leave that up to the board if they want to, if they want to press to have that money towards a future sidewalk. Um, we're certainly open to hear that. But um, as far as the site plan review ordinance, the 
2005 townwide transportation study showed a sidewalk that is needed on the Hannaford side of Gorm Road. Overall, we're, we're, we're agreeable to providing some of the additional landscape uh, buffering, but I would ask the board tonight if they would require any buffering screening along the back that faces that self-storage facility, uh, specifically the self-storage buildings. And we can certainly provide a little bit more landscaping and facing shots if, if that's what's being asked for. We will provide a wooden guardrail between the end of the parking and the soil filter just to protect it from, from snow storage. And with that said, I open it up to you and we'll answer any questions you may have. Thanks. Thank you. So um, <coughs> we do have opportunity tonight for public comment. If there's anyone here that would like to speak, please approach the podium. Uh, seeing no one else in the room, we will close public <coughs> comments. Uh, so in this, uh, for the just board, board discussions, I mean, clearly we have a lot of guidance that we need to provide here um, as he moves forward to this next step. Um, and I think the, the big one, which is a design changer, and by all accounts, is this, this driveway location. Um, quite honestly, there's not a whole lot of value in talking about the rest of the project if we as a board don't find this location for the driveway to be adequate. So let's start there. Does anyone want to dive in first on that? Right. I would like to um, maybe ask our town engineer what she thinks. <laughs> um, I, well, this is why there's a planning word, because I think um, you start with, as staff comments, um, is really aligning driveways, and that's the first goal in looking at Gorham Road. I think um, this is a very unique parcel. Um, as you can see, it's a triangle. Um, and so when you start getting into that corner, as Craig has, I think, done a good job at least to show us this um, and how that would work. Uh, I'm a little concerned about a truck taking all of Gorham Road to get out uh, and what that does to Gorham Road, quite frankly. Um, so. Can I jump in, Angela? <laughs> yeah, and uh, Jamel has a different answer. So I guess the question I have for the applicant is when and how often will these truck deliveries yeah. take place? Because I, I, I just have a hard time designing a site for two or three deliveries a week. I think yeah, that that's <laughs> not good planning. That's typically what, you know. If I could just have you come to the mic, introduce yourself, and. Great has some actual construction. Um, that's really, there's only maybe three or four a week after hours. There's not much more than that. I guess I'm just asking because it seems like the design is based on these very infrequent deliveries rather than the daily traffic in and out of the site on Gorham Road. So I guess the board needs to consider if these two or three deliveries a week should govern where the driveway is situated. That's just, that's just the question that I have for the board. Sorry, Angela. Yeah, I, no, 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 I, I agree. I, I think that's why, like I was saying, I think you start with your line of driveways and then there's all kinds of factors and that's where the planning board comes in. Yep. And I think you can make cases on both sides. Can you just touch again why is it, why is it so much better on that side of the site? Is it just because of the, the, the parking and the aesthetics of the... It's the yeah, it's, it is. It's just for the TV. So the tractor trailer, just to be able to try the loading dock door is right here. Mm -hmm. So the tractor trailer needs to back up so they can they can unload here, and this is where the warehouse space is. So they they unload the tractor trailer for their warehouse. Obviously, that's a, an important part of Napa Auto Parts is that they have to be able to get the auto parts to the store. If that's happening four times a week, um, there's really no other way to do it unless we park the tractor trailer along Gorham Road. And I don't think that's ideal yeah. for Gorham Road or the site. Um, this 
site entry has been in place now since the existence of this restaurant over here. Uh, our traffic study looked at it. There's been no crash incidents there. There's no safety issues with this site entry as shown. And, and this, that's one of the major areas where we, we seek the advice of the board. During that's the, the existing. Board. That's the existing entrance now. Yes. Okay. And um, yeah, to, to back I. I work right off of Reed Street in Portland, and oftentimes there's tractor trailer trucks backing into a refrigeration warehouse there, and it's, it's awful. Um, so I would be inclined to leave the entrance where it is. Um, do, do they, can they deliver it? Do they deliver at night, or can they deliver it at night, or, or? Yeah, it's it. Deliveries will come at night. One of the comments was uh, to provide a sketch showing that track the trailer deliveries could happen during the during the day, and to revolve the don't revolve the design around that. But I do have a sketch that shows that the track the trailer can get into the site and avoid all the parking spaces safely. At, when we first came to the board for sketch plan, we also had two curb cuts, so that, was, that would have alleviated the traffic, you know, uh, reverse maneuver in the site. But I think we got it to work pretty well here so that it avoids all parking spaces. With it, with it where, it, where it's shown <coughs> now. Correct. You know, it doesn't. <laughs> you know, it doesn't help that the try that they deliver at night. It the the point would. Because um, if they deliver at night, you'd be more. I'd be more inclined to have it. On the other side. Um, I quickly. But I can I can see. If I was pulling into Napa, um, from the customer perspective, I would. Anticipate that the parking, that the entrance would be where you show it, and that's um, where I would expect to turn. So I'm thinking that that's probably the the best place for it from a from an accident standpoint. But I want to just build off one of your thoughts here, it, and I think you had mentioned it. You know, you seemed adamant that the warehousing side of this building is in that location. Was there any discussion about flipping it around, seeing the mirror image, which means warehousing's on the other side, closer to the you know, in-line entrance front, so the tractor trailer essentially would pull into where you're showing it there, but then just straight back into a, the warehouse, rather than having to drive through the parking field and then try to wiggle its way around. Why not just flip the setup of the building? So the entry would be where it's shown now? Or I'm looking at your, the, you know, the model here for if you came in across from Meineke. Yeah. So let's just pretend that's the entrance for now. If your building was flipped around where the warehouse side was closest to that Meineke entrance, the customer side's way down the other side. Couldn't, couldn't that tractor trailer just go right up and then reverse right back in? The problem is that it takes up so much of the site that it leaves little room for the stormwater really wants, the stormwater... BMP really needs to be on that side. So that's what's driving that. Well, is no, the stormwater management? No, it's not necessarily. It still it still yeah, greatly <laughs> prohibits the site <coughs> development in a way. It takes away the parking that's desired, the amount of parking that's needed, um, and also just be, just because that's the narrow part of the site, it just it's incredibly difficult to get a tractor trailer in and out of there. Rick, do you have anything further? <coughs> Do you have anything further to add? No, uh, I'm curious as to what everybody else thinks. Rachel? Yep. Um, I don't have any problem with the proposed location of the, uh, of the driveway. Um, I do have a couple of questions about the landscaping. Sure. As I was looking at, of course, I've lost the page again. Um, in tab two, Page six, 
You say, to the greatest extent practicable, existing vegetation and tree clusters have been retained. The enclosed landscape plan and details indicate the vegetation that will be preserved and necessary protection measures that will be implemented. <coughs> the only thing I can find on the landscape plan is a statement that the existing trees will be preserved. It doesn't actually show which trees and where you're going to be preserving these existing buffering trees. Yeah, to be honest with you, there's not a lot of existing vegetation on the site. There's actually less <coughs> impervious area proposed than existing. The only real trees that will be saved with this, if you're looking at the plan to the bottom left-hand corner, there's some vegetation in there along the Shaw's side, but there's nothing significant. Where the single family dwelling is, there were, there were some trees around that area, but um, with this plan, we can't save that to make room for this soil filter. Okay, I, I also am looking at the um, snow storage uh, along Gorham Road that looks to be in the buffer. Yeah, we can remove that. Is it going to be adequate? What then? What you have left? How are you going to? How are you going to? <clears throat> how are you going to accommodate the snow that would have been there? Well, there's two fairly sizable areas. We can also expand the snow storage on the other side of the sidewalk um, next to the handicap parking. So there's some room there for some snow storage. But other than that, if 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 it's a, a winter that has a lot of snow, it, it will have to be hauled off. All right, because uh, in the area that you're talking about, while I can see where you've got the current snow storage, you also have, uh, right near the handicapped areas where parking as well, you also have um, trees planted. There. Okay. So it's um, not going to work. Um, <clears throat> is there going to be any place where there's actual lawn or or what? I mean, the, the near the uh, storm filter, near the dr uh, the filters, um, near the the dumpster and the sto snow storage. And I'm on the sheet seven looking. Um, <clears throat> is any of that going to be lawn, or is it? How are you going to treat that? There, there. Right now, with the stormwater management plan in place, approximately over fifty percent of the overall site will be developed. The area. And you're, I believe you're talking about over by the soil filter, all that generally drains in towards the soil filter, but there is an embankment built up, and that's just going to drain a sheet flow off the site. Um, there is some lawn area to the left of the plan where that snow storage is, but the site is pretty well um, maximized to, to make use of, of the site for the Napa facility. Okay. Now I noticed someplace on the plants that you referenced a mezzanine. Um, and I think you did, and I couldn't find that on the, uh, I couldn't find that on the interior plans. Are there stairs or ladders? How do you get up to? Okay. All right. I'm done. I just want to quickly circle back, make sure roadway has been squared away. I heard from Rick and Rachel. Roger, you want to weigh in on that real quick? Sure. Um, I, I think the problem, I understand where Jamal is coming from regarding the uh, tractor trailers and the deliveries, but I, I tend to think that the problem is the, the shape of the site and the limitations you have with the site, so therefore I'm inclined <coughs> to go with their proposed access road uh, into the site. Okay. So Jen? Um, I actually have a question for Angela. Um, if a left turn lane is deemed warranted for this site, is there, does 
desire by the town or has anyone thought about what that, because there are so many other driveways here that are sort mm -hmm. of alternating, mm -hmm. a left turn lane into this site on its own seems like it would be <coughs> kind of odd. Um, this is coming from a place as a parent of a kid who went to daycare across the street from here and found it very difficult to navigate in and out at, you know, around five o'clock. Um, yeah, I almost threw you under the bus on that one thing. Maybe Jen should go because she in and out of that other driveway many, <laughs> many times. It's really hard. <laughs> and it's really confusing because there's a lot of people, because there is no left turn lane is mm -hmm. really what, what I'm thinking. So, um, for example, a number of people left turning, attempting to left turn into the Shaw's entrance right there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, all of this is just making me wonder if, a center turn lane here has been thought about at all. Um, and while this um, project itself may not trigger the left turn lane warrant, might it be a good idea in general, I guess? So or has anyone thought one about of it? The, one of the comments that came it through, and I think we had talked <coughs> about it internally, was that how Meineke had triggered, obviously, the left turn pocket they have, and then how, how this aligns with that could be problematic or maybe like you said maybe it's a bigger um, question on that corridor well, um, I know even go even going up yep. towards um, Payne Road right yep. yes yep. Road. yep um, the you know the, r the right in right out at the gas station there mm -hmm. and then you get into the left turn lane at the signal so you know as you mentioned there's there's adequate um, road width there so I just wonder if having a left turn lane either for this property or for that short stretch of the corridor in general might actually help facilitate some of your truck turning movement if you could uh, mm -hmm. I apologize I said left turn lane and that center turn lane mm -hmm. which might actually give you more room even to take a right yep. coming into the site yep um, I think uh, we looked at a little bit what and it kind of goes to I had in mind when you were talking about sidewalks is oh, I have two transportation committee members, but we've been talking about the whole Gorham Road corridor is a big plan happening right now. Um, but one of the things we talked about, we looked at originally too in that section, um, is just the curb cuts that are there. So when you talk about like yes, it would benefit the daycare and it would benefit Monica and it would benefit this site. Shaw's I think is underutilized, so it kind of is skewed the a little. There, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I think <laughs> the the gas station at the corner is right in, right out, which nobody really abides by. Uh, which I'm <laughs> shocked there's not more accidents than there are there. Which I think the center median needs to come back. Um, so really, you're kind of limiting those turns rather than encouraging in that section. I think this is kind of a section that, um, so I don't know is about going the whole stretch right now because I don't, I don't think it's warranted for the, for the uses that are there now. Mm -hmm. um, but it definitely could be something we look at it when we go and design that section of Gorham Road. I was thinking really kind of from the signal, yep. just about to the limit of this property maybe, or I'm not sure what that transition would look like, but mm -hmm. something that might pick up this, those and those alternating driveways, that's all. But you do make a good point that we don't have that traffic analysis to know whether or not that left turn lane is warranted and what that does to Gorham Road, if that needs to be offsite improvements widened and have more turning radius and, and how that impacts it. And how the back-to-back, -back, have you looked at that at all, Craig, the back-to-back -back kind of left turn lanes and what happens in that area, yeah, whether you're yeah. aligned or not aligned with we haven't Mikey. got, no, we haven't yeah. done that yet. Because, uh, as you said, that would make a big difference, but too. Yeah. Our traffic engineer did sit, mention to me when I showed him the comment that it would be mm -hmm. easy enough to do with striping to make that left-hand turn lane if, if, if we have to do that. Mm -hmm. And we are doing traffic counts on April 27th. Yeah, because it looks like on your other, so the flipping between the two um, turning exhibits that you provided, you know, it looks like actually either way, um, you're kind of, well, sorry, either way for the larger 
um, tractor trailers for the WB 67s, you're, I mean, this is a wide swing anyway, even into the driveway where it's shown. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess I, in general, tend to agree with Jamel that designing a site for, in, you know, an infrequent delivery um, always seems a little out of balance to me in comparison to customers and employees that you know are coming to that site every day, twice a day sometimes. Um, but I also fully appreciate how difficult a shape this is to work within. So um, I don't know if any of that is helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Clears mud. Um, so <laughs> I'm curious to hear about the left turn lane warrant, I guess, to hear more about that. And so if you're not ready to say one way or the other without a study? Yeah, I just think more information would be helpful because I think if, if a left turn lane, so two things. To hear more about whether or not uh, this project warrants left turn lane and then what the town might be, um, what we might be looking at sort of longer term in this area and does that fit in with that. Basically the comparison between a left turn, if this project warrants a left turn lane, what does that look like versus a center turn lane treatment for this section of Gorham Road? Um, and I think if it was, because if I think if, if you, if, if there was center, if there was a center turn lane allocated, you could make your turn from that space, which would make, you know, the angle that you're entering the parking lot a little bit easier. I think too, though, asking the applicant to hold off on development so we can figure out whether or not Gorham needs a center turn lane is also not. Yep, sure, and, and fully understanding that, you know, they shouldn't probably be responsible for putting that in. Um, but that said, it, it, it is a challenging area to navigate turns during peak hours. Um, and they, you know, they're, they're certainly coming into that with more trips and more activity. So I, I do think there's some, some participation there in the conversation, I guess. Thanks. Rick, can you weigh in on the driveway alignment for us? Yeah, I don't know if I can be much more, uh, but for four trips a week, uh, I think this would work. Um, so I'd be inclined to, to uh, uh, allow something like this. It, it is tough, and you know, you can't make the building smaller, so you can move the, the loading dock. Uh, it's just going to be tough. Maybe you can just make the deliveries in a panel truck and not a tra tractor trailer and alleviate that. But I don't see how that can work for your business model. So I'd be I'd be all right with this the way you have it. Thank you. Yes, Rod. Um, you know, regarding the um, the turn lane and everything, I would think in the future as we continue, you know, improving Golden Road, that um, if the businesses along there hear enough complaints from their customers about how difficult it is to get in and out. They'll be very amenable to any kind of improvements we may want to do in the future. Well, if we keep uh, approving misaligned driveways, we might force the issue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, now I'm going to weigh into uh, just so you have a sense of, you know, looking, if you try to do a true alignment with Meineke across the way, they, with the shape of the parcel you have, I think you eat up so much of the usable lot space. Because this is the existing building footprint, correct? Are you tearing down? No, the, the existing down? the existing building is more. It runs parallel to Gorm Road, and it sits more central to the site. Okay. It's it's. So you are pushing this though as far back as you yeah, can. Yeah, and, and the existing building is a little bit smaller, <laughs> and. This is really the only orientation that will fit this size building, just provided the building setbacks and the landscape setbacks. Mm -hmm. And we really worked hard to try to align it with Gorm Road, but it just, with this building size, it just didn't work. And, and Oops, I'm out. Patco, and Patco came forward before with a building that was actually a little bit larger, mm -hmm. 10 or 20 feet larger, and then just, 
we ended up sh shrinking back a little bit to make it work. Yeah. So, you know, for, for what it's worth, I, you know, we, I think we're all, you see us all struggling here with the alignment issue because it, it would eat significantly into a lot of the usable space or at least the flow of the property. Um, but, you know, I, really I think we all need to heed Jamel's words, which is we don't want to be p planning for just four deliveries a week either. So um, I am sensitive and aware of that that issue, and I think it was it was right of him to call out on it. Um, and it but I appreciate that left turn movement, um, not left turn movement, but the alternate driveway movement that you showed because that does help us visualize what it does look like if we did get that alignment. And I'm, I'm glad you took the time to take that one step ahead and say that they're probably going to ask me for this. Yeah, good job. Why well, not? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's helpful when you can do that. So. Um, so from what I've heard roughly out of this board is I think we're, we could probably talk about the rest of the I ideas at, with what you've proposed here. So I did stop us as a board from kind of moving on until we figured out this driveway alignment. Okay, thank you. Worthwhile to have the discussion, I think, on these other items. Um, but, you know, I'll caveat by saying, you know, if this traffic study comes back, you know, we might be having this discussion once again. Okay. All right. Understood. Thank you. So, who wants to jump in with any other? Roger, do you want to sure. give us some thoughts here on anything else that was? Sure. You know? I, I I agree with you regarding um, trying to deal with Shaw's. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, the um, how many how many uh, service vehicles? That was a question. You know, the trucks that go out. Five or six. So when about talk, five yeah, five or six service vehicles will will park. If you're looking at the plan to the left, so the westerly side of the parking area, they'll take some of those parking areas right along the front there, which is why we needed a little bit extra parking beyond what's required. Do, do they have many people, just regular customers walk in? Or is it mostly so deliveries out to? Um, what Napa does is the reason they're putting in retail stores, they currently have enough business that they drive to so the retail's a bonus, you know what I mean? That's why yeah. they put up a new store. But I've never tripped the traffic count at all in, on any store that we're done for. Okay. So, you know, it's not like a, like when we did the Todd Lens, those, tra those trip uh, traffic studies, these give us a state permit, no problem, because there's so little traffic with the retail. Okay. Um, the, other, the only other comment I will make is, um, I don't think you have to worry about buffering, I mean, uh, landscaping behind a building that's facing the, you know, the self-storage. I don't think they care. I would have to just, that, that could change at any point. Okay. Just, so, just throwing so, that out there. So you adamantly disagree with me on that? I don't disagree with the board. <laughs> I'm just saying that. <laughs> just consider okay. what other uses could go. Very <laughs> just saying. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jen, do you have any uh, follow-ups with any of the other lingering questions to help staff and um, I don't think so, but can you just talk, speak to a little bit about what is, is there nothing, what is there in the, right, that must be where the house is. There's, no, there's nothing planted, there's nothing growing, like, in between... At the, at the front of the property on the easterly side. So basically between uh, where you've shown the soil filter and the road. Yeah, so general, generally you don't really want to plant too much around a soil filter. You'll have those, the root system get into the soil filter. So we did our best to show landscaping around it, but generally that footprint needs to stay grassed. Yeah. Um, we, and the reason why, the it's a little bit oversized when it comes to volume, but it's meeting the main DEP minimum surface area on the bottom, which is why, unless Angela was agreeable to it, we shrink it up a little bit to meet the volume requirements instead of the surface filter area requirements. Mm -hmm. um, but, and, and then on that, there's an embankment that dives down toward the self-storage facility. So I really don't want to put too much on that embankment to to cause any sort of failure in the sure. future. Yeah, sure. And is there no, there's nothing existing 
there's no existing vegetation to speak of between the soil filter and Gorham Road. Is that what you were saying earlier? Yeah, that there's the landscape buffer, and nine feet of it can be planted with can be planted, but we but we we really need to stay out of the soil filter. Sure, but there's nothing there today. It's just open. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can, can I? Um, have something else that you may want to chime in on with the landscaping and how that interacts with this soil filter and um, such is that um, this tr this site does not trigger our chapter 419 so there is no annual reporting and I don't know and I will say I don't know how Napa works and who maintains the sites and I'm sure they do a perfectly good job <laughs> but I think a lot of sites we have seen over the years that aren't necessarily maintained at a at an aggressive pace, um, and with it sitting right on Gorham Road, I think when you're talking about what that looks like, you will see what that soil filter looks like as typically tra trash collectors and a lot of weeds and things like that. Yeah. Um, so it needs a lot of maintenance, and that's not required. This site is not required to report to the town on that. So it is going to be whatever it is. Well, you can make some stipulations. And I guess that's my point: is we could either talk, the board could consider a more robust landscaping in that very minimal area, or we could discuss getting into more of a maintenance agreement where they would have to re report to the town. There's some options. I think we could, the board could consider. And a lot of these, that soil, the, the base ends up looking like sand, not necessarily vegetated. And that's just how they work. I mean, there's tons of them around town that you can see. And it's just the media mix that you just can't get grass to grow in sand, <laughs> essentially. And that, so that's what you'll be looking at at Gorham Road, whether soil, it's maintained or not, right? For, for this soil filter, Main DP offers two options for soil filters. And this soil filter here is designed at option two, which has the top okay. soil on the top. Okay. So I'm hoping Good. grass grows, but what I've learned is it's all about the contractor who installs yes. it on what type of media you get in there. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes you can grow grass in there, sometimes you can't. So I wouldn't bank on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jen, do you have anything else? I don't have anything else, yeah. Thank you. Rick, you good? Yeah. Rick? I didn't know we were all going to get two turns, but... Well, it's, uh, I'm going to... Well, the first... Good. Yeah, no, the first, <laughs> first round was... The first great. round was driveway. Yeah. The, the, oh. This is the rest, so... Uh, oh, I got you. For instance, you know, we... We have a board as we haven't really addressed their question regarding the sidewalk, the multimodal co contribution, you know, versus the no, sidewalk point. there. You know, my... For, for anyone that's wondering where my head's at right now is uh, you've got your driveway. I think the staff should get the rest of their way. Um, yeah. That's that's what we call compromise. Yeah, and that's, that's <laughs> I was just putting it out there. Um, but we'll, yeah. We'll and and I'll that. say this, too. Um, you know, I think there's a lot to be said about a stronger uh, landscaping or more restrictive landscaping plan, especially as we get into this buff buffering and the snow storage areas. Um, you know, I think I think paying attention to that. Uh, Jamel brings up a good point that you know that might not always be a self storage facility. However, I'm not sh I'm not 100 percent convinced we need to landscape the back of your building at this time. Um, maybe you reserve the right to. However, <laughs> you know, um, but that's where my head's at. Uh, Rachel, do you have anything to build on here? Uh, and now, what what's the distance of the building to the to the line in back of it? Five feet, ten feet. To, to the property line, yeah. I believe it's a 10-foot setback. I'm just trying to figure out what landscaping could actually go yeah, there. Yeah, that was one item that I was worried about. If landscaping went back there, it would be 15 feet. Not 15 feet, you can put something in. And um, some opervitae, something along that line back there. Like to, I'd like to see something along the landscaping in the back. Okay. Anyone good. else want to chime in? Get some good direction, you feel, at this point? 
Yeah, I guess there's a couple other lingering, just that the vegetation and with the soil filter. Mm -hmm. Is the board okay with only nine feet of that planted? Strong opinions, anyone? I'm okay with it. On this end? You fine? Like the, you get the head nod, so I guess. And then I'd just like the to yeah. note that the zoning does require a 15 foot buffer. Yeah. So, so long as you can, you know, provide evidence that the intent is being met, you know, it, just, it can't just go away. We're not that powerful. <laughs> we well, even we can't <laughs> change the zoning. <laughs> and, then, and then, does the board, sorry to hold you up then, for more time. Does the board feel like a landscaped island is necessary in that first row of parking? Along Gorm Road. Uh, you're talking about between some spots? Oh, I, I see. Uh, where it says diagonal striping? Uh, no, one of the questions was from the staff was whether or not to break up that front parking with the landscape, with landscaping. Uh, Oh, because of the number of spaces? I think it's because of the number, well, the amount of impervious, because of the circulation of the tractor trailer tucks in the site, you're going to have a mass amount of pavement that's not even being really utilized for the majority of the time. So it's just trying to break up, so I think, the heat like island two, that they're two creating. Two islands or something? Is that what you're thinking? Excuse me? Two, like, landscape that, you know, islands in between? Is that what? The striped amount? pavement areas, so the two. The striped pavement areas. The hashed areas, yeah. I think some flowers look wonderful in there. Oh, yeah. that, that, stripe, that striped area you need that is what thing. was. I, 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 I'd like to keep that there just for the tractor trailer deliveries mm -hmm. in case they need to get. That's why that was put there. I wouldn't buy expensive flowers. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, all of that, excuse me, is all of that space needed? Is all of that space that you've got striped needed? I, th I think you're going to find that your report might have that left lane. You might be missing some of that. Okay. So why don't, can we tackle that when you have your traffic report? Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> getting late. We're getting giddy. Let's, uh, let's get a quick staff report. I'll make it really fast. Um, we have a mylar to be signed. Uh, Doreen, did you, do you have, we, uh, do we have a permanent marker? I do. Do you mind grabbing that? Yeah, I can go get it. And uh, we also, as you guys know, we have a planning board workshop scheduled for April 22nd at 6 p.m. with dinner and beverages provided, and it's just going to be a general overview from our peer reviewers and SECCO and what goes behind the scenes in development review. So we look forward to seeing you guys then. It's going to be, um, I think, a good workshop because we, we do have new additions to this board. I think um, we kind of had a bit of a baptism by fire, but it's also nice to get into that little inform informal setting to discuss, you know, just different strategies on how to maybe ask questions or what questions are, you know, really good to ask and just to kind of have that nice comfort of uh, not always being recorded. So, um, how long is that? The retreat. Retreat. It's open ended. That's why actually it it was it was going to be based on what where it kinda of took us. So um, we we had typically started to do those an hour or hour and fifteen minutes before our board meetings and found that the discussion was kinda of cramping, you know, we were like racing to get to the board meeting. So we decided that it would be be good to leave it open ended and here of course for some of our peer reviewers and things like that. So, um, what is dinner? What does dinner mean? I think that's pizza. Yeah. It's typically always <laughs> pizza, pizza, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Are you making requests? Mm -hmm. um, so that's staff report. It's completed <coughs> administrative amendment report. Administrative amendment report this right. evening. We don't have it. Jamel, we don't have any administrative. Uh, no, no, that's fine. Uh, any planning board correspondence? Mm. No. Planning board comments. Anyone not set enough this evening? <laughs> oh, okay, I will motion to adjourn. Double second. All in favor? Good job, guys. We're gonna power through. Thank you. Power through to eleven. We power through. That was a big.